Five, yeah, Kylie. Four, three, <laughs> two. What is up, guys? It's Yui here, back at it again with another week of the Stand Up Podcast. I am joined with me today, as usual, by Thomas Sim. We are talking about Waste Shores Nationals right now. It's pretty exciting stuff. Uh, it's coming up real soon. But, you know, today on the podcast, as usual, we're talking about Vanguard and not Waste. Uh, joined with me today, um, Phil Lai, Nikki Goldman. You guys can quickly introduce yourselves. They're reoccurring Hello. guests. So. Yeah, uh, I'm Phil Lai. I'm a, I'm a reoccurring guest, yes. Uh, I won BCS uh, with Chicago for this year, playing Bermuda Triangle, so I'm going to Worlds this year, along with Josh, actually, who is here. We'll, we'll talk about him in a sec, sorry. But yeah, so uh, I guess that's basically it for me. I don't know shit. <laughs> well, yeah, um, I'm Nikki. Uh, I won, or I got second in DI. Uh, I <laughs> <laughs> the, yikes savage oh yeah. <laughs> uh, uh yeah at this point i think almost like uh like mainstay <clears throat> cast members at this point they, they come on like almost every week so uh I, you know, I think you might see them very often guys but 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 i digress i digress today today we have someone really special to me and you, not special to me that sounded <laughs> really weird but uh i was you know i gotta be honest here when i first started playing vanguard three years back this was like the first channel i was watching so uh yeah what is up josh introduce yourself please and you know to be honest why don't you tell everyone like how we met it was it's a really cringy story to be honest <laughs> all right um what's up guys my name is josh from cardfight empire uh also sponsored by the brand of vision uh team vision um i met ua at worlds uh it was, it was actually pretty interesting because i was still like getting my bearings on japan and everything like that it was, like the first time that i've been there and so I was getting off, like, the plane, and uh, we had, like, a Bush Road rep waiting for us. And so we're following the Bush Road rep to, like, where all the other players are. Like, I have no idea what's going on. I'm just following everybody. And, like, suddenly like, I'm, like, carrying my bag. I'm, like, okay. So I have, like, my card fight bag and my book bag and my other strap bag. And I'm, like, barely have, like, my own balance. And then, like, I literally, like, got, like, kind of, like, bum rush tackled. And I'm, like, oh, my God. I, like, dropped my bag. And he's, like oh my god, are you card by Empire? I was like, <laughs> I, was like not, I was like, in Japan? I thought he was like a random, like, Japanese, like, bypasser in the, in the airport. I was like, what? I was like, he's like, yeah, me and my girlfriend watch your channel. And I was like, oh yeah, like, it's, it's cool. I was like, yeah, like, thank you so much. And then he's like, whipped out the camera. It's like, strictly broken <laughs> I was like oh no I was like okay so this man actually plays card fight I was like ha happy about that actually because I thought he was like a random passerby and I was like random people in Japan just watch like card fight empire like content like that's cool to me I was like really cool though but I was like it's really, really funny when I met him because uh it's just like it caught me off guard because you know, I literally didn't see UA at all and then he like came out of nowhere <laughs> and, and then I feel like I feel like I've seen you in like many tournaments. Every time I go to Cali, I see you. Yeah. And so like you're almost like a man. Getting to meet you back then, you had that eight lure, the deck with eight vanilla. <laughs> yeah. I was, I got to meet my hero, man. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, um, yeah. Uh, so you know what's crazy? Before we get onto the this this week's you know tournaments and news and everything, you know, you know what's interesting to me? When we first met, we had this like long discussion, and I was like, mm -hmm. "Yo, you're, so you're you're this you're so good and pro play games." that team and everything like why are you not sponsored by them and you, you told me like you know you had a brand and everything pro play games uh wanted to kind of take your brand if you joined their team and you were not okay with that and now look at you you're on team vision which you know by the way is really awesome and congrats to that uh like Thank what you. happened what is what is it about vision that why so you i think the biggest like thing that like kind of pulled me into vision is a i really like the people um that are really on the team i kind of like before this point like absolutely refused to be on any team with people that i did not like <laughs> um, which was like you know not not to like completely shit on him but you know <laughs> rip, rip angel i like refused to be on vision while he was on the um and so then there is uh there's the second part which is like uh quinn the uh the owner he's like really really cool about like you know just having togetherness with the content so it's like, I, I don't have to, the biggest thing like out of everything is like not having to stop my, my own content or give my own content to another brand and not be able to like continue. Cause it was kind of like all the things that were like my main brand things, like PBG is like, we just want all that first, like on our, our, our channel first. And then you can re-upload it later to your channel. And I'm like, 
but why would I re-upload it later to my channel if people would just watch it on PBG and then like not, I wouldn't have the same retention, you know? Um, because like they would literally just be seeing the same exact content. I even think that YouTube like has like a auto self-detection thing when you re-upload the same exact video and it doesn't let you do it. So literally I was just like, like, nah, I'm good. Like I'd rather just continue doing like my own content. Cause like both of my channels, like I have two channels, but um, both of my channels are something that like I highly value to myself. So it's like, I don't let anything come between like myself and my channel. So it, like the fact that vision was like willing to be like, okay, you can keep your content here, but you're just like, if, if you would do some additional content for us, that's cool. And then they also like help me with resources, like editing and stuff like that now. So that's pretty cool as well. Awesome. Sure. Awesome. I have, I have a quick question. You just mentioned that you had two channels. I only know of Cardfight Empire, which was the other one. The other channel is uh, called Let's Plays Animes. It's a anime reaction style video game channel. Ah, go check yeah. that out, guys. Yeah. Nice, yeah, nice, that, nice. That one I started uh, last year. Um, Cardfight Empire has obviously been around for a lot longer, like th maybe three years at this point. But uh, Let's Plays Animes is uh, just one. It's a little baby, little baby channel. <laughs> so. Which yeah, is funny because it's already bigger than Cardfight Empire, but nice. I mean, I think it's because of the audience. Yeah, yeah. I think it's because of the audience. <laughs> People are like, "My Hero Academia," I'm on. I'm in there. So. Yeah, link to both channels will be in the description. Uh, they're bigger for channels sure. than us, but you know, just as a matter of courtesy, for sure, your channels will be in the I description. Appreciate that. And uh, yeah, so today, any Nikki, any questions for Josh as well before we? Um, no, no. How do you um, how do you like Vision more, or like? um like how do you like vision in general like because you you've been like there for what, a couple of months yeah, yeah maybe like one month or two months um i think it's very structured very organized i like that about it um also just like like i said the dynamic is also really important for me like at any time that i feel like a team dynamic is uncomfortable i just like leave so um it's really cool for me to feel like i don't have that pressure of having to be like okay i'm on this team because you know, of the perks that they give me or something like that versus like, I like the people, you know, it's like having a job that like, you're like, I like this job or this job pays me a lot of money and I got to work with like a lot of like shit people that I don't like. Yeah. Um, and so I like being able to like have both. Like if I can work at a job that I like and like, like the people, it's like the perfect combination for me. That's nice, good. Nice. Good, good. Yeah. <laughs> nice, nice. Um, and yeah, so let's, let's wrap this little introduction up. Uh, so you're here for a reason. You just won BCS Chicago Block A, right? Was this the same? Uh, I tournament? won Block B. Philip won Block B. Yeah. Phil Block. So, so we have the both oh, winners now in yeah. the same in the that, same yeah. podcast. Yeah. And so, yeah. while Philip played Bermuda, I think uh, unanimously just considered the best deck in the format at the time. You played. You played Aqua Force at the time. Yeah. And what I, I know, you have a deck profile of it explaining everything. But mm -hmm. in that deck profile, you also say that you literally picked it up from a friend like the day before or something, right? Yeah, yeah. So, so basically the story is, uh, is I usually build every deck. But when that set came around, I actually did not build anything in that set. And there wasn't like a specific reason for it. I was just like, didn't get around to it. I was like slacking a little bit. And then I just didn't build it. Um, and there's like a friend that I have named Saqib. Shout out to Saqib. Uh, he lives in Georgia. And he had the Aqua Force deck. And so I was kind of like thinking like, what do I want to play for Chicago? Like, like leading up into Chicago, we were like basically at a locals that was happening on a Wednesday. Cause in Georgia, like I always get told this all the time. Like people are like, oh, you're so lucky. But we literally have like six locals a week or something like that in Georgia. Um, so we have like a locals on Monday night, Wednesday, Friday, two on Saturday and one on Sunday. Um, so basically like, between like standard and premium format it's just uh really cool and consistent practice for me to be able to have that many locals and also i get to like see all the players a lot um so the player um Saqib, i like was kind of like thinking uh what deck i wanted to play so for the longest time i was like stuck on like nova grappler like i was like i'm gonna take nova grappler and i've also been like an excel player for like a really long time like ever since like original like set of v-series vanguard like i was playing like original nova grappler even though it wasn't like that great i was like trying to beat like kagro and like royals with it and stuff like that but it's like i always would like really liked the concept of excel because it just like fits my play style which is like always funny because like there's like a player in japan called like joshua excel lee and people are like is that you and i'm like no that's not me but like i also like playing excel decks but um but yeah, so I was like thinking about like what I wanted to play. I thought that Nova Grappler had the consistency, the hand advantage. They could beat Bermuda. 
like kind of like a 40 40 60 or like a 50 50 matchup like if they go first and so i was just kind of like like discovering like my comfort level with it and i was basically i always do this thing like the night before where it's funny because i actually like told someone like i told like four people that are in my hotel room i was like, i'm gonna win tomorrow because i'm doing this exact thing like i really haven't done this thing since i won with luar which is basically i go to a regional and when i get there on that friday i literally just like think about vanguard like the entire time like even we go to like dinner or anything like that i'm talking about vanguard the entire time and then i play test with someone until like four or five in the morning and then regional starts at like oh, 8 a.m or something like that so like i'm already good on like low levels of sleep because youtuber and I, I just always like have a lot of like time issues time constraint issues so um i can like sleep on like two or three hours and be good but like literally i just feel like it just gives me that inner comfort level to know that i've play tested like the max that i can um and put in the most work that i can to prepare for the event that i'm about to go into so i actually ended up playing all night um with someone named fred so shout out to fred um he's like a kind of new jersey player a new jersey new york player and so i was play testing with him all night in the lobby and i was just having him play like and him and dunbar um i played against dunbar a little in the hotel room i went to their hotel room and played and uh dunbar was playing melody against me and so the previous day, like I was just playing Nova Grappler um, against his Melody deck, and I was just having him play like the most base way possible, like without any like special thinking or anything like that. I was like, just like, just do the first thing that comes to mind. And I was like getting clapped. Like, I don't know why, but when I played Melody back home against like Nova Grappler, I was literally like doing okay. And then like, I was literally getting clapped. Like, and plus like my, my, um, my Nova Grappler build ran Shout as a consistency fix. So that's really bad against Melody because of like all their threes. So a lot of times, like every time I shouted, I was like, ha. And then they were like, ha. And then like, and, and so they were just like, Sonata, Caro, Fina. And I was like, oh, so I'm just giving them all the resources. Meanwhile, like I'm losing everything to the soul, which makes no sense. So, but against every other deck is good because, you know, you run like nine grade threes and like 12 or 13 grade twos. So you like mostly will always win like the shout battle when you do it against other decks. Um, but that also like helps you fuel your soul for everything that you have going on for your, like your counter charge and all that stuff. So I thought it was really good. I basically had Justin play me. I was getting freaking clapped. And then I was like, you know what? Uh, I was like, I was like, I planned for this in the back of my head. Cause I was like, Sakib, let me borrow your, uh, your Aqua Force deck. I was like, I have an exact deck list that I want. I was like, I want you to build it this way and then bring it to the locals on Wednesday. And I fly out on Thursday. So I was like, just give it to me then. And then I'll literally be good to go. And I was like, all right, bet. So then I was like, okay, I'm getting clapped way too much. Like, reach in my bag. I was like, all right, I'm, let's, let's just like play Aqua Force. And I put Aqua Force down, and then so I'm like, like winning against. And at first, Justin didn't think that he was like, I don't think Aqua Force has a better matchup against Bermuda. Uh, and, and then I was like, all right, Gl Glory Millstrom front trigger. And then he was like, mm, that's that's pretty good. And then I was like, yeah, yeah. I was like, you know, I was like, you're, I was like, you're right. And then he was like, also like intercept. And I was like, yeah, no, you can't intercept with Fina because glory blocks intercepts and he was like mm, that's real good actually and i was like i was like yeah like this seems to be like the perfect counter in my opinion to bermuda so which is funny because i guess it's because the amount of games we played but like probably like the first six games we played i probably won and then the last four games we played out of the 10 because i just wanted to play 10 games and be safe i lost the last four so then i like because i went like on like a losing streak i was like mm, this is not it like, Aqua Force is not it. And I was like, I'm just going to, you know, I'm like, fuck it. I thought about it too much. I'm just going to play Nova Grappler in the morning. I literally, kid you not, I woke up in the morning because, like, I woke up with, like, uh, this, like, leg cramp randomly because the way that I slept, like, I, like, literally fell asleep on the bed and half my leg was hanging off the bed. Yeah. So my leg was, like, straight the entire night just hanging. I don't even know why, how my body didn't, like, automatically put my leg down. But I woke up, and I got up, and I was like, oh. And I fell down on the ground because, like, my leg was cramped. And I was like, okay, I need to take a shower. The rest of my roommates were like, okay, we're going to go down to breakfast. Because they – I don't know why they always do this, but they always wake me up, like, right when they've all gotten ready. And they're ready to go down to breakfast. They, they're like, all right, Josh, get up. Get ready. And they're like, we'll meet you down at breakfast. I'm like, why didn't you guys wake me up before this? But um, I literally got in the shower. And I kid you not, I was doing like this troll thing to like hype myself up. I was like, the, like feeling the water, and I was like, Aqua Life, baby. And then I literally just played Aqua Force. <laughs> I literally kid you not, I literally was just like, 
All right, so I literally had wrote my deck list for Novograpter the day before, and I I just ripped it up just to like not give myself the chance to play Novograpter. I ripped it up and I ran downstairs and I grabbed the deck list. I just started filling out the deck list for Aquafor as fast as I could, nice. and I was like, "Well, we're already we're already locked in now. It's like League, like you just lock in that champion, yeah. like you know, like Sona AD carry or something like that. So you're like, well, we, we got to do it now. Like we're already locked in. And so he wins the whole thing. That's like the story, and then he wins man. the whole thing. Wow. Yeah, which is holy shit. It was really funny actually because I actually had like a really like positive um, thought process going into it because my friend John Howard he was uh, playing Nova Grappler, so I played Nova Grappler against him before the round started, and I was like, okay, I don't really know this matchup. So it's like if you just attack like, all their rear guards, like, Aqua Force gets more attacks than Overgrappler does, and they need counterboss more than you do, uh, since you only need, like, one for a really glory maelstrom to go off or pop off as much as you can. Like, you can just attack into all their rear guards, and then, like, with the most pressure attacks, which is basically, like, the glory, or, sorry, the regular maelstrom restand attacks, like, the third or fourth attacks, you can just attack into their vanguard, and most of the time, they'll give you that counterblast just because they want to be able to use skills next turn. Um, so the restand for glory just or for regular motion just became really, really powerful. I got it off like a lot throughout the day, um, doing that to people. Um, and people thought that like glory motion was like the true finisher. Like in finals, like I just ended the game on regular maelstrom, um, mm -hmm. because it's like that powerful. So literally in the first round, I actually like like we all had our numbers and I'm sitting with like Dunbar and like some of team vision and all them. And so like, they're like uh, attention Vanguard players round one pairings have been posted. So I'm like, can you guys look up my numbers? So I asked Justin if he can look up my number. And so he's like, yeah, you're, you're at table uh, 92 or something like that. And I was like, what table are you at Dunbar? He was like 92. He's like, wait, are you fucking kidding? Oh. And I was like, wait, are you fucking? Yeah. I was like, I was like, so the person I play tested with the most, like last night, like literally I'm fighting him first round and so then i fought him and i never saw glory so like first round i just took an l to him and he's playing bermuda so then i was like maybe maybe this is not it <laughs> i was like literally like losing round one is so bad i was like i'm gonna have to win like every other game like to win and then i was like all right i'll just win other every other game like let's go like and so basically after that um i ended up like fighting melody and like it was almost like my deck was like mad at melody <laughs> like because like literally every melody player i fought like i just d completely dumpstered them before they even got to three or like right when they got to three i survived and i just gloried so it was uh kind of ridiculous i ended up playing against i think like five to six nova grappler players in the entire day like holy nova shit, uh... was heavy presence in that event yeah mm. i played against a lot of them i feel like um i don't know like we can ask phil this to confirm but I feel like A block had all of the regular like meta decks and all of B block was like rogue, like yeah, rogue yeah. plus yeah, like yeah. little amounts of meta. Cause like the top, um, the top eight for like, uh, for block A was like force, like melody players, I think. Yeah, and block B was, yeah, block B was literally like two Maelstrom, one DP, one Kagro, um, <laughs> Freaking uh, Hank Kwan was undefeated through Swiss with Neo Nectar. I was like, yeah, he just crazy. beat so many Melody players, and I was just like, what? Like, <laughs> I just literally watched him like like dumpster Dunbar, but only because he was like checking like double heal, double crit. I was like, damn. Yeah. <laughs> but um, but yeah, he literally like went undefeated in Swiss with Neo Nectar. So we had a Neo Nectar player. With an Oc Force player, and the Oc Force player was talking to me, and I was actually like, that was the matchup that I didn't want, and so. Uh, Literally, he was like, yeah, uh, you're the only other Aqua Force player, I think, like, in both A and B block and top eight. He's like, I hope you don't fight each other. They literally show us the pairings, and it's, like, for top eight, like, Aqua Force versus Aqua Force. And I was like, man. And then we sat down, and I was like, yeah, okay, so uh, high roll to go first. And uh, he, he literally, like, like, rolled first. And he rolled in like both dice and like both of them landed on double ones. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I literally got so hyped. I literally was like, yes. And so then I like, I just rolled one dice for like the disrespect. And like literally I was just like, okay, I win. And I just put it here. And then I like opened up my hand was like grade one, Algos, Tidal, Salt, Coral, Salt, regular Maelstrom. And then for turn I drew Glory. And I was like, oh yeah. <laughs> like, oh. like I was just like, please shake my hand. So. Oh, yeah, after that oh no top four and top two were pretty easy but top eight was probably actually the hardest match that i had because mm -hmm. i was really hoping that he didn't like hit a lot of damage triggers to survive and then glory me like before i gloried him or something like that so 
Um, but leading into, I know you wanted to talk about like what I think about Aquaforce currently in the meta. I know that Aquaforce has won like a couple of BCSs, like ever since I won. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and so I was really like happy to be able to win like the first like BCS of the season um, with something because that means that I don't have to worry about as many threats going into later in the season. I feel like it gets harder and harder like throughout the season because many people are like prepping up competitively no one kind of knew like and chicago is a lot bigger i think than usual um i don't know phil do you live in chicago right i don't or but no? usually they would have okay. like one block this year they had two blocks and everyone got thrown yeah off. so i i know that a lot of like chicago players are telling me there's usually never this many people so i feel like that's really good because for me that's increasing the competitiveness of vanguard the amount of people and so like with the first like regionals of the season having that kind of standout like all the other regionals have been bigger than normal too. So I'm kind of expecting like bigger than normal at Atlanta, which is where I live. And, and then bigger than normal at Cali, which is pff, my boy. Yeah. Cause like, we're going to need Cal three, three blocks or something. Cause <laughs> three Cali's blocks, like three already, blocks. yeah, three, like literally Cali's already ridiculous. Like Nikki was there when I was in singles and I literally went X one and did not top like one of the singles. Yeah. regionals. Cause I went X one, I got 11th place. And I was like, Nani, like, I was just like, what? Yeah, like, I literally, like, tried so hard in my last match before top eight. And I was like, cool, I'm still X1. Like, yes. And then they were, like, not good enough. <laughs> like, so, un so, undefeated yeah. or ripped, so. Not, not to cut you off, but so no, how good. do you think of Aqua Force right now? Phantasmal Steed, Aqua Force. I think Aqua Force so, won in Houston Standard Block, too. Yes, I think so, Force. So the thing about Aqua Force that I went to is kind of, like, the thing that we all know is, like, Glory, Maelstrom, plus Front Triggers is, like, a broken combo like just being able to like not block once your opponent checks one trigger is like so for so many attacks is like so ridiculous to me um but also like just like looking at the amount of decks that can still hold their power like way past their set is like there's like no other deck that can do it like like aqua force so i think the only like, like real threat to aqua force is kind of like murakumo in the form of Huga because they can like bottom deck your or, or like shuffle your whole board back to deck but other than that like Aquaforce still retains its power and its consistency. Like, Mordred can't really touch it. Um, or it can touch it, but it can't really, like, fight it well and, like, consistently beat it, in my opinion. Um, the same things for uh, DI and Pale Moon. Like, they just don't do enough uh, to be able to block all that. Um, and then, like, pretty much your only out is when you're doing Huga um, and you're going first as the Murakuma player. So you're able to Huga their board before they glory. And they're able to attack them for super big, so they waste a lot of like potential resources from their hand. And they either near death die and they lose, they lost their whole board, um, or they just lost their whole board and that you still burn some resources from them. So they can't do as effective a, as a glory turn as they would have been able to do before. Okay, fair. So I think so, it's the yeah, top competitor to answer your question, basically, just because of glory maelstrom. Sounds good. Sounds good. So if you guys need. If this guy's want to play Aqua for us, you know, Strictly Broken TCG still has a ton of Glory <laughs> Monsters on st in stock. So you guys should listen to Josh and uh, go buy them because uh, we can't. Go, go check out the deck list <laughs> on my channel if you need a build. Go, go check out the deck list and then go straight to uh, TCG player and order them. <laughs> the broken page. All right. All right. Let's move on to the next topic. This one's a big one. Thank you, Josh, for sharing all that. I really appreciate it. No problem. It. No problem. Um, yeah. So the next topic, and this directly applies to Josh, actually. And, you know, a lot of you guys who are looking to play competitive tournaments. So Vision announced, I think it was two days ago, or was it mm -hmm. literally three, yesterday? I think three or four days ago, something like that. Yeah, yeah earlier, earlier this week. Earlier this week, mm -hmm. they announced their Vision Cross Circuit. And they, like, teased it two weeks ago as well. Uh, but basically, the rules for the Cross Circuit are, are out. Uh, it's going to be an online tournament. It's, it's on October 26th, I think. October yeah, 26th. Yeah, that sounds about right. The, the October weekend, it's... Yeah, it's online. on Saturday. It's, mm -hmm. it's on CFA, and entry fee is ten dollars for pre-registration and fifteen dollars to enter day of. And wow, this is, I think, a big deal because uh, the what what is it? Alter Reality Games ARG Tour canceled Vanguard. A lot mm -hmm. of privatized Vanguard tournaments are being canceled right now, and it seems like they made like a huge announcement. Right, Vision's like, we really care about competitive Vanguard. We really care about the community. Sign up for this. This is really hype. This is exciting. Uh, Josh, you have anything you want to add to this before we get into the topic and the discussion in itself? Um, I think just like that's another reason that I really like Vision is because I think that you know they do show like a true concern for like wanting the com uh, the community of Vanguard to improve. 
And that's something that I can definitely respect because that lines up with my vision for my channel, uh, for my, my vision. But, um, but right. I didn't even say that willingly, but my mind control, but, um, but yeah, literally it lines up for my ideals for uh, Vanguard. Like I've always wanted to grow the community and look out for the community, look out for competitive. So it really is helpful. Um, and I know that, I don't know if you've like kept up with it, but vision has been doing like card fight area tournaments, like the past, like couple months, like I've been in a couple of them where they've just been doing like um, every two weeks, they do a card fight area tournament. Uh, they do all the, like, the sign in and all the sign up sheet and all the pairings and stuff like through discord and challenge. So they basically have uh, like Quinn stream it. Um, and then they have like tournament organizers that like their specific role is to like run the tournament. Uh, we have like rulings uh, and judge people probably be someone like me um, who's just very experienced with the game. And then also like, they have rules like covering everything that you would really regularly be worried about kind of with an online tournament, like such as like DCs and stuff like that, that which is a uh, really solid as well. So I think all of those tournaments have been small steps into leading into the cross circuit. Something big. Yeah. The cross circuit. Okay, cool. So, How big were those small tournaments? I'm actually curious. Um, so I think the biggest one, like we, like week after week, there was actually like more and more people. And we were actually talking about this because it like got hard to manage for the current vision members that we, we had. Cause not every current vision member could like help every night um, or every time that we did it. So I think the biggest amount of people that entered at one point was like 80 to 85. That's a lot um, of we, Yeah. Oh, we've been yeah. doing, yeah, we've been doing like standard and uh, premium, like double elimination tournaments. So basically just like once you lose twice, you're out. Um, but people seem to really like it. And uh, even though like the oh. prizing hasn't changed because it's a free tournament, um, winning a box is oh. like, it's just a really good practice for a lot of people. And something that I like as well is that like people that live in like other countries where they don't have a locals, like, cause I get like personally, like as like my card fight empire channel, I have the Facebook page that's attached to my channel and people always like message their con concerns there and they're like josh what do i do if i don't have a locals in my country or like can i start a locals or like is there a way for me to get bushiro to recognize my country or recognize my area or whatever and i don't know what to tell them because i'm like oh if you don't have a locals and you don't have like product being distributed in your area like that like sucks like because you yeah. want to play you want to play vanguard so bad you know but you can't in real life so it really helps to be able to have something like an alternative for um in my opinion of like something like card fight area where, where everyone can access it everyone can play and so it gives those people who would normally wouldn't be able to compete a chance to compete all right that's a good that's a good little advertisement for this tournament and 100 percent uh speaking here right now everyone who listens to this i recommend you play it if you have the funds if you have the competitive drive i'll recommend and i'll support you guys you guys definitely <laughs> check it out and play it with that being said the discussion here lies that and it lies in the fact that i actually don't really support an online structure like this and that's where we're going to discuss this i i don't think an online tournament like, like this is ultimately feasible and you know so the entry cost is 10 to 15 dollars, right mm -hmm. i don't think the people who pay that entry fee can get a reasonably competitive tournament that is worth their 10 to $15, right? So there's a couple of things here to address. Like you can potentially cheat. You can, I can have a second monitor open and some guy and me, I can discuss the plays that are going on in my game and no one can control that. No one can regulate that at all. Uh, yeah. My internet can DC, which can completely ruins the integrity of the game and like mm -hmm. the value of like competition. I, like I, I, and furthermore, like for vision themselves, I feel like this is going to be such a big convoluted complex project. Like, I'm worried for them that the first one might, you know, explode in their faces. So those are my arguments. I'm presenting that why I'm really worried about this tournament. Yeah. Uh, if anyone wants to chime in. Um, I, I think um, it is. Sorry. Oh, go ahead. Um, okay. I, I was going to say it, it is very interesting. And it, it does kind of have, like, a lot of high points and a couple of low points, as you just mentioned. Uh, one of the things, I think the biggest thing is potentially cheating where you're playing with another person. That's kind of like watching over your screen, right? But then the tournament structure itself, if regulated properly, will actually do fine. The issue is, yeah, regulating it is going to be really hard. But I think this is going to be their like big uh, pilot, right? To kind of see exactly how well this will run. And so I think we're just going to have to kind of play and see, and then see how it goes. But like, 
this tournament itself, I think, is a really good opportunity to actually like win something in. It's ten dollars entry. There's supposed to be like some decent pricing for top eight. We don't actually know what that is yet, so I do want to see what it is. But uh, being able to win like a trip to Care Expo is a really big deal. I'd say like that that flight itself is like not cheap, right? If you happen to win, you get that flight to Care Expo, and now you get to play at an actual regionals as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, some yeah. some things that I can cover, I guess, since I would be like, I guess, out of all of us, like the leading expert on the like the, the, yeah the leading expert on the <laughs> on all things vision <laughs> yeah yeah just so i know like the most about it um but the 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 concerns that you brought up uh ua are definitely like very big concerns that we've thought about um things that i can mention is like a the dcs um so as far as dcs we do have a role for dcs it's kind of like you want to we kind of advise our players like not to join if if they have a really bad connection or if they have a spotty connection at all, just because like if you DC, um, our first like course of action is to for you to take a screenshot of the game. Like both players take a screenshot, they send it into the moderators, and then the moderators basically decide like what was this like. We don't ever say that something was just an intentional DC, but obviously like as a Vanguard player who's been playing for a long time, it's a lot easier to see like okay, did this player DC after they got Hugo and they have four cards in their hand, they're at five damage, and they're about to eat seven attacks. Like, you know, there's that. And then there's, like, basically, like, okay, I DC'd and we're both on grade one or we're both on grade two or something like that. So being able to make the decision, like, we have, like, a kind of, like, moderation board that makes the decision between a couple people, like, is this an intentional DC or is this not an intentional DC? And if it's not an intentional DC, then both players just restart the game in general. And then we tell that player that had the DC is like, if you DC a second time, we just have to count it as the loss for you. Because basically like that would mean that your connection is like so bad that it's not really consistent to be able to yeah. play anyways. Like I, I know me personally, like whenever I would play in a tournament, I would like definitely make sure that I get somewhere that has good connection. Like if you DC once, then you can move somewhere else or use a different Wi-Fi or something like that, you know, just to help you out. But, you know, I definitely think that if you're playing in anything online, like if you're playing in a League of Legends tournament online and you DC and your team doesn't have you for 15 minutes, like you're probably, your team is probably at like a huge disadvantage just because of that, you know, if you've ever played League of Legends. Uh, but um, the second concern that you brought up is cheating. So the only thing for me is I don't really think that cheating on area is a thing just because of, so when you spectate, um, on area, it's kind of like the creators of area cover this themselves. But when you spectate someone's game on card fight area, you actually can't see either one of the player's hands or any like zone that is not open to any player. So basically, if me and UA were playing and Philip was uh, spectating, which is how we uh, do, we basically spectate the games when we're streaming the games for Vision. And so um, basically, we don't know what plays to call until they happen because we don't know either player's hand unless we saw them drive check something and we remember it basically. So basically when you're viewing a game, both players' hands are hidden. Uh, both players' decks are hidden. Um, you can't see any of that. And then the only things that you can see that are open are the field, drop zone, and damage zone. And the uh, counter blasts that are face up and face down and soul. So basically uh, being able to keep it to that, I think it's kind of like impossible to cheat. If you will, I mean, it depends on which way you're talking about cheating, but unless you know how to like literally like get into the card fight area system and like rig for triggers, like I think it's like less chance of cheating than in real life. Um, if but like what stops? So what stops? Like right now, you can't see my hand, right? My hand is uh-huh. off the screen. What stops a friend of mine who's standing right here, uh-huh. watching the game from my monitor and like uh-huh. literally telling me what to do or like having a discussion with uh, like let's say a phone like underneath here like how are you going to stop that and that's like my biggest concern right like i can literally be 2v1 so are someone. you talking about like like oh you're just so you're just talking about like basically like smarts or basically like you know strategy yeah, um, yeah like back or, okay i see um i guess i guess there isn't really a way to regulate that too but there have been like you know even in bcs is like if people are really dedicated enough like ways for people to communicate like holding up fingers so like i'm not gonna say names but <laughs> we, 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 you know. oh my gosh uh, but, but, but like in, re- in real life it's like completely different because you can like physically you can actually see where mm. as an online it's impossible you cannot see someone yeah. that's standing like over yeah here. you can't I see mean, i kind of think so 
this is like might be like a dumb argument too but i kind of think because it's standard like the plays are so linear anyways it's kind of just like okay like if someone tells you like what to do or something like that and you wouldn't naturally do it it's kind of just um something that i assume to be like so when i'm play testing right um i always in real life when i'm play testing against someone let's say i'm play testing against a player that's like not as good as me and they're like only moderately good so when they're playing their deck against me i'll like stop their plays and i'll be like why did you do that you could have done this and that's more consistent and so i basically play test with the idea that my opponent should be playing at the most consistent level possible um, even when I'm playing against someone that's not as good as me. So that's kind of like the same way that I think about it. If I was in the tournament, like if they do, if someone tells them to do a play, it's only a play that me as a good player would have expected anyways. You know, like it's kind of like counting on someone to be stupid, like entering a tournament. Like, sure, that's like a free win sometimes. But when you get into the top eight of any BCS or anything like that, like you actually have to know what you're doing and actually know what your opponent is capable of. And yeah. it's all about shutting off your opponent's plays too. So if you do a well enough job of playing against your opponent multiple, uh, a lot of the time, you can actually just shut off any play that they would just tell them to do, you know? Um, so that's kind of the way that I think about it personally. Now I will like agree with you guys. There is no way for us to regulate that and like sit over their shoulders and be like, hey, 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 no helping them. But like, you know, at the same time, it's like playing any like competitive game online, like playing Dragon Ball Z fighters online, like, you, your little brother's account, you give this controller to your older brother. Your older brother's, like, whooping ass, you know? But, like, eventually it comes down to, like, you know, you having to face me and Philip, and then, like, top eight, and you or your brother are not good enough to beat us together. Like, you know? Like, I don't know. It's like, you know, ultimately I think that it will come down to the best players that do deserve it. Um, and that's just me honestly speaking on the topic. Because um, I've entered vision tournaments many a time, and I'll just say that... uh. I always make top <laughs> mostly 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 so uh so weird know. weird flex but okay <laughs> <laughs> right so so it's like you know sometimes i like enter as like and, and like and i think it's a cool thing because we're also like looking out for the community too in the way that like vision players like like i would just say right now that like we don't get like sponsored flights and stuff like that as part of like our like brand like packaging thing we don't get like sponsored flights to like regionals and stuff like that so even for us that are a part of vision like this would be something that we would be interested in playing and we can't even play in it because we're vision because we've oh, considered yes, we yeah we can't play in it because we basically considered that it's like the same as bushy road like how bushy road employees can't play in tournaments just because oh. bushy road would be worried about a uh, bush road employee winning and then they get the free flight and then everyone's like oh of course they won because they work for mm -hmm. bushy road and blah, blah blah and it becomes this huge controversy so like even if i'm like my own separate brand like car fight empire like and i really want to enter i can't enter because if i win and then card fight empire wins and card fight empire is part of vision then people are like oh it was, it was rigged like no matter what happened like i could have played as skillfully as possible you know whatever whatever but it ultimately still comes to down to you know what people think so we've heavily considered that and we're trying to heavily support the community and yeah. not have the community like look at us with like, you know, pitchforks or whatever. Um, yeah. So as that bonus, like we're also taking it so that the people that are on vision, the players like myself, John to Hayden, Dominic Manalo, you know, China and Bailey, like we're all sitting out of the tournament so that everyone else can have a good tournament that they enjoy. Um, so I think that that is at least worth something um that's because we also really want to play as yeah. well i i assume the stream is like lagged like by a lot right because um like no not not quite um just because the card fight area the program yourself is the lag on there is based on your own cpu so no, I as mean, i'm not literal, means like sorry not literal lag i mean like the stream isn't like like completely live it's like delayed by like maybe oh like half an correct, hour or correct so that it's not like right on the game i agree yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it's a it's slightly delayed probably like uh i think like maybe a minute or two minute or do you two think or that's three. enough because like uh, there's I, nothing that's stopping do you think that's enough so the reason why i think that that's enough is because when we're spectating like i said there's nothing that you could like the the biggest benefit for watching the stream games would be for 
a player that's in the game currently that we're like streaming or spectating. And there's nothing that we could learn or, or that the players could learn or say from anything that we would do, if that makes sense. So like, just to make a, a like a formal example, if me and UA again are playing each other on area and your vision, you're watching our game and you say, mm -hmm. okay, it looks like Josh just rode to grade one and he's using the starter skill to draw or something like that. Like maybe, you know, next turn we'll see X, X, X. But like, those are like typical things that people already know about whatever deck you're playing. You know, it's not like saying like, oh, we saw him draw this. So maybe he's going to do a combo into this, into this, into this, into this. Like we're not giving them combo plays. We're basically just, you know, going through what they're doing because sometimes on area it happens too fast for people to be able to see what's consistently happening. Especially if um, something that we have to do because of the way that area is uh, w works is that we, at the beginning of every round, we start um, off watching a match, which that match will be, you know, just the same amount of time as it would be if you're actually playing on area. But then when that match ends, you know, let's say that me and Philip are facing each other and we're both undefeated in round five. They're automatically going to go, you know, just like any real tournament, they're just going to go, oh, Philip and Josh are undefeated. So we're just going to watch this because this is the most hype match of this round. Mm -hmm. And so then once me and Philip end, um, they go to watching a remaining fight that's happening. But basically, area, when you're um, spectating someone whose match has been going on for a while or you're not in at the very beginning, it actually, like, self-speeds up to catch you up to where they are currently in the game. So basically, yeah. like, you would see, like, all the plays happening, like, like this. And unless you're, like, a really experienced Vanguard player, you're like, what is happening right now? Like, hey, so I saw this person check front, draw, you know, blah, 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 ride grade two, grade three, like, blah, blah, blah. And then it will literally just stop at one point. And when it stops, that usually means that you're currently, like, caught up to where the player is thinking about whatever their play is. So that, like, doesn't leave us a lot of room to actively give them, you know, choices to make. Um, so I, that's why I think that, you know, the minute or two or three delay is more than enough, probably just because it doesn't really give the, uh, the players any extra information. I'm also going to agree that the two minutes is, uh, enough time. And I do really like how you guys definitely thought this through, like all, all of these stages of the, of the tournament and stuff, right? That's really, really good. Okay. Mm -hmm. I, do uh, know... I just want to mention, oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Uh, uh, no, yeah, I just want to mention yeah. one more thing. Um, like with DCs and stuff, like spe oh, like with a tournament coming up with the Vision Circuit or whatever, mm -hmm. um, like with a, such a big prize as a flight to like Kara Expo, that's like that's like a pretty like a hundred thousand or not not sorry hundreds to like a thousand dollar flight, mm -hmm. like depending on where you are in the U.S. I guess, but um, like with something such uh, as big as a, that prize, like. Do you think DCs should be handled a little more strictly during um during this kind of tur tournament? So personally, um, I think yes and no, which I think would be I don't want to speak completely for Vision, but um on this front, but I think that most of us would hold the same opinion here, um, which is saying that uh yes and no, basically. So well the reason that I say yes is because you know you would think naturally with a much bigger prize on the line, like DC should be regarded more strictly, just like as if it were, you know, the change from like a floor level tournament to top eight being level three, level two, whatever. But at the same time, like we don't want, um, that's something that we thought about and we don't want people to, because sometimes like area has bugs, right? And sometimes there are bugs that we don't know about. And there's certain, like I know from playing on area in a long time, if you've ever watched one of my future fight videos you know that sometimes i'm like what the hell area just closed it didn't even give me an alert like what the hell just <laughs> happened and so like basically there's like interactions sometimes and that's like through the area creators it's not something that anyone on vision can control but there's like some like interactions where like for example one of the interactions on area is that if you and your opponent both place cards on the drop zone at, or sorry on the guard circle at the same time and then one of you clicks so naturally how this would work is Let's say me and Nikki are playing. Um, I'm attacking Nikki with my Vanguard that's like Waterfall or something like that. So naturally, Nikki would have to guard with, you know, a certain amount of cards to block my Waterfall because he can't Sentinel it. So Nikki would guard with all these cards. And then when Nikki's done with those cards being on the guard circle, he would click any one random card and then click the drop zone. And they just all go to the drop zone. Like everything on the guard circle goes to the drop zone. So basically what happens is because the, the area, like creators made it that way, is if we both happen to place a card 
um, on the guard circle and Nikki clicks one of our cards and presses drop zone, it creates a, like a phantom copy of one of my cards. My card that was on the guard circle, it creates a card, like it sends Nikki's card to the drop zone, but then it also creates a phantom copy of my card and sends it to drop zone. So if Nikki's playing Aqua Force and he guards with like the Aqua Force heal trigger, um, the PG, or sorry, the Aqua Force heal trigger and like the crit and like a regular draw trigger, and I place the Shiryuki on guard circle by accident or something like that. And then Nikki clicks like his drop zone, it would send a Shiryuki to his drop zone, even though my Shiryu key is still yeah. in the guard circle. So eventually, like, this is the programming, like, catching up with itself. So once the game catches up with itself, it'll give both players an error because it doesn't know how to handle the game anymore, and then it'll shut both of you out. So mm -hmm. that's something so what, that... Yeah. You know, uh, that's... Stops, yeah. Go ahead. Oh, sorry. sorry. Uh, what stops me from, like, like, let's say, like, I'm a completely scum player, and I'm, mm -hmm. I enter this tournament, and I'm entering, like, with like the only mindset to win, I will do anything to win, blah blah blah. Mm -hmm. And like, so what stops you from like, oh, I accidentally put something in the guard circle, and bam, the game's over. Like you can't continue the game now. So like, um, do you so, think there should be a penalty? Yes, yeah. just because um, like so so many like tips and tricks. Like I was actually thinking about making a video on my channel about how to download area and like common things about area that can be misconstrued kind of like what I just mentioned, just because I've been playing on area for a long time. But um, things like that, most of the players that already play on area will already know about this bug. Um, so this would be something that if you never played on area before, you wouldn't know about it. You know what I'm saying? This is something that you would like stumble upon completely by accident. So like something and the in the easy way to fix this is you literally just take your card and you put it back to your hand or you put it back to your field or something like that really fast before one of both players puts to the drop zone. Because basically the player that is responsible for putting them to drop zone should be, basically be the player that gets punished because you, yeah. you, in, you basically like made the bug happen. Like the bug just doesn't mm -hmm. happen from us just, oh, oops, I guarded with this. It's like you guarded with this and then you attempted to put all the cards on the guard circle into the drop, which is what caused the bug. Like if, you, if both of us put a card on, on – uh, on the guardian circle and I move my card off or you move your card off really fast because you realize that it's going to like cause the bug, then the bug won't happen. Okay. So definitely things like that, like is something that we can look out for. Like, and I feel like it's, you know, pretty easy to tell. Like I said before, if, if something's being malicious, like if you like, you know, if we're on, on aqua force turn two, you know, I, I know a lot of people got like pissed off with me like this in Chicago, like, man, that, that X fucking stupid. Like, basically, like, where, you know, I go first, I ride, my opponent rides grade one, I draw for turn, I'm like, boom, Al Ghost, Tidal Assault, Coral Assault, uh, like, Wheel Assault, and something, something, something. Like, I just play a bunch of cards. And then I attack with Tidal Assault, they don't check a damage trigger. I attack with Tidal Assault again, they don't check a damage trigger. I attack with Al Ghost, Restand Tidal Assault, they don't check a damage trigger. I attack with Tidal Assault, they don't check a damage trigger. And then I attack with Coral Assault, and they DC, I'm like, like, mm, like, like, because we're already at like such an extreme disadvantage, you know what I mean? That that when we look at it as the moderators, we're kind of like, okay, hey, like we feel like you were just gonna lose anyways, and that's kind of like sucky if it was like a true DC. But at the same time, it's like we're trying to be fair to all the players involved in this tournament, and it's not fair that if you put yourself in that much advantage state, then your opponent DCs, and because it's early. Like, they're like, oh, well, I just DC'd, like, second turn. Like, it doesn't matter. We can just restart the game. But then that wouldn't be fair because then you guys have to redecide who goes first or second. You guys have different hands. You know, you guys have different conditions that are on the board. So it's just kind of like that's why we have that board of moderators that's able to just look at the screenshots. And we can also get a replay because Cardfight Area has replays. So we can also get a replay of the game. Um, get... Okay. One of the players, especially if one of the players feels like they were cheated against, both players have the ability to save replay games. So you can actually just save the replay uh, file and send it to any one of us, and then we can put it in our area file and we can load your replay up just as easily and view it. So, um, and it views uh, and it plays at like whatever speed we want it to play at. So for me, I would be able to play it at like the same speed that I play my future fights for, which UA has probably watched before. They play pretty fast. So, yeah. um, yeah, like sometimes I'm like saying stuff and I like can't keep up. I'm like, oh, glory happened. Oh, sure. oh blah, blah, blah. So, so, you know, yeah. like um, being able to run it back that fast um, is also a save for a time constraint, but also is 
as a save for like situations like that where we're able to view the very last turn that happened before DC. All right. Well, okay. So I guess now that I hear all this, at least I'll say this. My concerns, not all of them have been solved. You've definitely quelled some of them. Some definitely not solved. And some, like you said, it's just unavoidable at some point when someone's mm-hmm. trying that hard to get a little advantage. But like Phil said, I totally agree. The fact that you can tell us all this and come through Vision as a representative and go like, look, we thought about a lot of things. It gives me a bit, it definitely gives me a lot more confidence actually that this tournament might run smoothly because this is what I told my team. I'm like, guys, real talk, if this blows up in their face, I think Vision might just, as a brand, is going to explode. So as like kind of a last word, I guess, I really hope this goes well. If it goes well, I think you guys will explode positively. If it goes badly, <laughs> you guys are going to uh, age old 2020, man. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, jokes aside, I think we'll wrap it up like that. At that. Once again, guys, uh, October 20, do you guys have the exact date? It's October 26th, I'm pretty sure, right? A Saturday. Yeah, I think it's 26. Do your pre registration. It's 10 bucks. You save five bucks. Your, 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 First place prize is a flight to Care Expo if you're not already in like the Cali area. That, that was That's my cool. idea. You're welcome. All right, there you go. That just, is just, awesome. Just the, just the the pre-reg idea, just because uh, oh. I know that people really like how uh, how ARGs worked. So when we were deciding, we actually had a meeting to decide on like what the entry fee should be and stuff like that. And I was like, well, if the prize is a flight, like I would definitely pay like twenty twenty five for me. But I know I'm a more competitive player. So like this is like ARG would just give you like store credit to ARG and nobody wants yeah. it. So so you know yeah. so basically like playing paying twenty twenty five to enter like ARG would be like oh pay twenty to enter our event and then if you pay twenty five we'll give you a mat and I'm like I don't want this mat like I don't, I don't I don't even I don't even want this so it's like I would always pay twenty and then if they had like a pre reg for like fifteen and then like twenty five at the door I would be like all right let me just go ahead and throw this fifteen right here before I go to ARG because I ain't paying like 20 $25. So it gives people that option yeah. um, to be able to pay less. And I definitely think paying $10 to possibly win a flight like is like OD, yeah. like it's like crazy. Yeah, but, yeah. that's crazy. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. I think the entry fee, the entry barrier is definitely not that high. Once again, guys, I, I cannot stress this enough. If you care about the competitive integrity of Vanguard in the future, show companies like Vision that you guys want to see more of these happen by you know signing up and everything i 100 support it i might not be 100 percent on board with the idea of a online tournament but the fact that they're I doing this that, is already um, a good thing i cannot completely speak for what's going to happen in the future but i can kind of say with like maybe 60 percent certainty that there's going to be like a vision circuit series mm-hmm. in real life too so that would be a big step like showing support towards this would definitely be a big step in you know, oh, yeah, us definitely. trying to do any future projects or anything like that. Just seeing, you know, what people are able to uh, be like, okay, we really like this or we really like that Vision is doing this. It's like, you know, in Japan, they have VGCS. Like that didn't start just by, you know, one player coming and being like, I'm ready. <laughs> like, like, they literally just, you know, had to have like, you know, a bunch of people, you know, that are able, and now they're able to do tournaments where they win like Nintendo Switches, PS4s. Yeah. Like Japan's actually crazy. For Vanguard, yeah. it's like I look at their prizing sometimes, and I'm like, "Yeah, they have big." Like, like, I yeah, wish I could like win like a Nintendo Switch. <laughs> yeah, like I wish that I could win like a you know an actual game console or something like that. Like even Card Fight EX, like a lot of people have been buying it from the Japanese store, and like we can only buy it through buying gift cards. So because the price is like around like sixty yen, um, basically you have to buy a $50 gift card and a $15 gift card. So effectively the game for Americans is like 75 because even though you'll have credit left over in the Japanese eShop, which like, unless you're a Japanese, like, you know, game player, like what were, were you going to use that for? But I mean, and it sucks in that way, but I, I like also like have it downloaded. Like I bought it and I've been playing it pretty heavily. Like it's like good practice, I think up until the set where it stops, but also just the same thing, like showing Bushiro that kind of support mm-hmm. Maybe we'll make Bush Road go like, okay, maybe like, because, you know, whenever Switch games are released, and in, in this is any Switch game, like you guys have seen it with Super Smash Brothers Ultimate, if you guys follow that. I know that's a widely played game. Who doesn't play Smash Brothers? Like, it's like you just saw them 
announce like that you know we have the five dlc characters that came out when they first announced the game but then we just found out that there's five more dlcs coming and people are like well how, how do they plan that this far ahead they don't like they literally can just like, like update the game as it goes along so i think that even bushy road and the company that you know the game goes through would even have the potential to update future sets like i know that solemn said that that's not a thing but solemn doesn't work for bushy road just saying uh, um, oh, oh, okay, we, we're getting oh, the yeah. roasting starting yeah. early. Okay, that's a good I'm segue. Just... We'll edit that. We'll edit that. Okay, we'll edit that. <laughs> the solo roasting is starting early. And if a sneak preview, guys, I'm just going to release it now before we get yeah. to a solemn did not top in Cologne. Okay, anyways. <laughs> <laughs> no like, roast. No roast, one. though. No roast. I love you, solemn. Can you make me uh, some custom sleeves at least? Uh, you know, we're shouting you out here. I'm sure. <laughs> all right, let's just move on to uh, the next topic. Man. <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right. I, I so sponsor me, please. All right, anyways. Uh, <laughs> next topic. Thank you for sharing all that. The vision cross your once again, guys. I cannot stress enough. Sign up. Uh, but I'm not. I'm not affiliated with Vision, but you should sign up. It's a cool thing that they're doing. All right, moving on. Moving on, guys. Segueing in. So what happened this weekend? Two two regionals. Singapore. Uh, what are they called? They're called BCS. Yeah, BCS Singapore. BCS Cologne. Let's go. Singapore first. Let's go Singapore. Wait, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait, what's up? Let's pause. Let's pause. Let, let, let me let switch. The key, let the key swap. <laughs> wait, because what? my phone's on like less than ten percent. I don't know if you're looking at the Discord chat. All right, so Nikki, your camera is now gone because your <laughs> device is now battery lit. So now you just look ten times more attractive and ten times more mobile. So, well, that shirt, man, that shirt just raises your attractiveness by like a hundred percent. Yeah, you're right, dude. Oh my goodness, dude, who made that beautiful shirt, man? <laughs> Which company made that beautiful shirt that you're wearing, dude? You gotta let actually. Me know. What is the company? I actually have no idea what the company. Is. Oh, okay, 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 okay. <laughs> no, but strictly broken. <laughs> right. But yes. So what happened this last weekend? Cologne happened, uh, and Singapore happened. We're gonna start off with Singapore. And uh, Josh, you you never uh, you haven't seen an episode, right? Yet at this point, I'm not. Yes. Uh, so we just review the info. Oh, we just review the information and give our little thoughts on it. And so we start with standard, we move into premium, and uh, it's a wrap. So uh, let's see. So Singapore standard, Phil, do you have the breakdown of? Okay, so for Singapore standard, uh, could we even find results for Singapore standard? Because I couldn't. Have you guys found it? Uh, I think you told me Murakumo won and Shadows got yeah. second, right? Was that the case? Uh, yeah, Murako Yeah, Murakumo won and Shadows got second. And uh, one thing to note, I think the Murakumo deck was pretty like on par again we don't have the promo yet so it's not as full power as japanese and okay, then the okay. shadow uh it was pretty normal and then but i did run the one pbd which uh i know a lot of people on facebook the vanguardians a lot of people know that <laughs> that's not really normal yeah people are whining about that i mean i actually don't think that it's as terrible as people are making it seem you know, kill me, like, but you know, um, I think that it does provide an interesting option uh, for mini decks, just because like things like PBD can really like wipe. You know, they add that for the board wipe option, so you're already running the main engine in your deck, and it can board wipe things like Murakumo like really fast, and like just like two PBD uses, all right, six units gone, and it's like even doing that would be a lot more useful sometimes than like just doing your Mordred plays against them because. I can tell you as a person that's played Murakumo a lot against Shadow Paladin, like, Mordred doesn't matter to us. It, like, straight up doesn't at all. Like, it doesn't run us in any way. Like, yeah, but as as a one of bro, like, like you make a one fair like, point. Two or, two or three. So two th or this three. this is what I've noticed with one of right? One of is basically, like, if you see it, you see it. If you don't, you don't. You don't complain either way. If you have, like, one random deck slot left over, you're like, oh, let's just throw in a PBD. It might put in work. It might not. Whatever, right? If you don't really have anything else you really want to put in, then the one PBD is fine. And so mm -hmm. for that reason, I think it's okay to just play a one of. And it's like, yeah, if you see it, you see it. If you don't, you don't. And it's whatever, like, either way, right? It's not yeah, like you're, like, heavily relying on, like, the PBD plan. That's a whole different mm -hmm. deck. It's just, like, if you see it, and then you can, like, now have the option of going into like a more grindy style if you need to and so it's there for you if you want it like once in a blue moon sort of thing with the same logic though because he, he only played two danger lunge and i find that every danger lunge you cut 
sacrifices your consistency of pu pulling off the kill turn, which is like really important, right? The the four to six is really important against like protect, especially. Yeah, so and that that's another one of those. If you see it, you see it. If you don't, you don't. Things right? Like you can so kill the thing without going into danger lunch. You can just go into darks, and then that works. Yeah, fine. I I also agree with Phil. Um, I think that your kill turn can also just be done with double dark, um, just as effectively as uh, danger lunch. Especially against Protect, like, if you have, like, 50k Blaster Darks, 40k Blaster Darks, like, swinging and then they reach stand to be 50 or 40, like, it's still a lot for Protect to handle. Like, they literally have to, like, PG, like, every Dark Attack or something like that. So, um, the only, like, pity damage that they can take is that 4 to 5, and then they're at the mercy of Mordred and the rest of the Dark Attacks. So, I think that it's fine. Um, Like Philip said, if you, if you are a player that, in your mind, when you're building a deck, if you've reached the level of like your cards that you want it to be at so like let's say that i'm running four huga but i only want to run three shiryuki and i'm like convinced that i want to run three shiryuki we've seen a lot of murakuma players playing one of um hu uh, a lot of one of uh hayaki so like some some uh huga players will run like four huga uh like some version of the the other grade three that goes in the soul and draws a card um, and then Shiryuki, and then like one, one of uh, Hayaki Vogue. So even though in Mercury you surge it out, it just does add that extra like surprise factor almost. Like it's like a tech card in any game, like Yu-Gi-Oh, you know, whatever. Like if you see like, I don't know, one random card that no one ever runs any like ever, you're just like, like sometimes like, and I know that Philip probably knows this as well, but sometimes when you're playing in like higher competitive, we are so used to consistency that like non-consistent things really throws us off. Like if we're thinking yeah. like, okay, <laughs> like they're going to do Mordred, Danger Lunge, blah, blah, blah. And we have our hands set up for that and we're playing Murakumo and then they go, uh, ride PBD, uh, double counter blast, blow, like blow up your whole board. And then you're just like, what? what just happened? Like, I just lost my yeah. I just <laughs> lost my whole like PBD is like forty three fifty three k by itself, like three critical. And then like maybe you were expecting to be able to because of your hand, maybe you were expecting to be able to eat a danger lunge attack. You know what I'm saying? So like because you're like okay, I have PGs in my hand, or like where I don't have enough like natural guard, or let's say you don't have a PG in your hand, but you don't have enough natural guard to block a danger lunge. So basically, your hand is defensively really bad. But because of your board, you're like, okay, I can intercept here. Like, you know, I can intercept four times because I have four grade twos in the front row, blah, blah, blah. Like, PBD just gets rid of all that. Like, I can definitely say that PBD has been dropped sometimes on me in the past where I've been like, oh, shit. <laughs> like, so basically, like, if I get attacked, with, and especially because they have a Masquerade, the grade one Masquerade, because grade one Masquerade is 11K booster. So if your opponent happens to not have a PG and they attack you with a super big PBD with three critical and they boost it with the masquerade, that's easily swinging into like 64, 74k range. So being able to block that is like blocking Zoa in in uh, in premium. Like it's kind of hard sometimes, depending on what your hand is. If you don't have a PG, so if your opponent knows that you don't have a PG, they drop PBD. You're like, what do? Yeah, but, you know? but Danger Lunge does the same thing, right? The PBD, the uh, argument for PBD, like, is actually... That argument doesn't make sense, because danger, riding a Danger Lunge actually literally does the same no, thing. No, it, it, it's mainly for the board it, clear. Uh, yeah, you, it, yeah, so it's, it's only for the... the yeah. yeah, it's mainly here, for the board the other thing, clear, right? and it gets more power with the critical. But. Yeah, here's, here's the other thing. It gives you the opportunity to basically go uh, PBD, pop your opponent's full rope, swing in, and if they PG or guard normally, you can just pass, and if they're at zero counter blast, you can, like, stall an extra turn. Like it, it gives you the opportunity to kind of play like a little differently, and so there's some like kind of fishy things you can do. But the so, thing is, it's a one of like it's a one of. I so, really yeah, don't see, like agree really with don't, you, know? right? Yeah, so, it's, like, it's, I, it is a different way of thinking. In, in Vanguard, yeah. like I think, if a thing is not searchable, so in this case PBD, it shouldn't be at one. Like you want to see it. Like if you want to see it, some game it be it being at one is not like. I don't think it's a good case because in Vanguard you have like, like it can go to damage. It can just like, and you might just not see it just because it's a one of and like it's not searchable. And with like, with a Shadow Paladin, it can't recover it for, from going into damage or drop. So um, I, think I just it's... think that like it should be at least a two, at least a two of if you're gonna run it at all. I well, think, I think that you a... see enough cards just through yeah. drawing and stuff that you'll like right. maybe by second ride you'll see like maybe 20 cards at that point so that's maybe half your deck right 
Uh, yeah, but it, like, I think it kind of comes down to how often you want to see it and like the deck building aspect of it. I agree that if I were to put myself in that shoe, I'm not sure if I would play it in one copy either, but I see the merit of it. And I also I'm not agree with it. Phil just yeah. saying like, um, Phil's basically saying the, the whole argument of going with, if you see it, you see it. If you don't, you don't. If you lose it to your damage zone, okay, cool. That's not mainly what my deck does anyways. It's just a secret tech card. You know, like they, they have tech cards in Yu-Gi-Oh that are not searchable. You know what I'm saying? But if you draw them, it's like, or you can like side in, like like in Yu-Gi-Oh, you can like side in one of copies of stuff like that. So I don't think that one of copies of stuff are completely useless because they're one of copies and they're not searchable, but they're just there for... You know, and also if you're playing the grind game, like Philip's saying, like that deck goes through cards really fast between like uh, the main searching out every the main like five uh, k in your deck, like so like the mains sword breakers are out of your deck. Those uh, you start going through those really fast by turn three, especially if you start with the turn one the main that's already cutting like a lot from your deck already. Me personally, I run uh, six crit and six draw in that deck. So with the draw triggers, you're going through the deck faster as well and then also you have stuff like masquerade like checking top seven for pulling blaster darts and mordreds out of your deck so you go through the deck really fast and it could possibly just be for you know if the grind game is going too long like most of the time like between your darts and your danger lunges and stuff like that or mainly between like dark uh mordred turns like your opponent like what if you see that they use all their pgs and then you just decide to like drop pbd you know what i'm saying yeah. it, it's I, I think it's kind of like that and then also like it's the same like um it gives the same benefit to shadows that huga has access to because the strongest thing that i think is good about the Murakumo deck is not that it can attack like really big for a good amount of times it's the fact that you lose your board and they attack really big so it's always like like the same thing that made narakami good in its format is like you lose your whole board and you gotta block this big gauntlet buster or something like that, and the little rear guards that come along with it. It's like losing your hand and your board at the same time at Vanguard is like most likely in standard cases, like securing a win, basically. So, so the you... thing, so uh, sorry to cut you off, but like, no, no, you're good. Uh, with like you having the option, like, like you said, uh, for your, your example, um, your opponent like uses all their uh PGs, or like they don't have like you saw like maybe two or three, like mm -hmm. mid game, like, why wouldn't a Mordred with like maybe like let's say one blaster dark you know sometimes two like wouldn't a blaster dark and Mordred like be like much better than just one c uh pbd uh i would say no just because those are separate attacks where, where this is one big attack like with a lot of criticals on it so it could come down to you know maybe we're in the late game and your opponent like just healed down to four you know what I'm saying? But you know that they don't have any PGs left. So being able to, like, take the first dark or block the first dark and then PG Mordred, and then if they don't check a crit to take that last really big blaster dark is a really big difference from, oh, this PBD is way too big for you to take. And then also, like I said, you're giving them, you're losing that chance for them to retaliate against you next turn as well. They lose their entire board. So in the late game, things like OTT having deer um, access on board and you know, uh, Huga having access to Hayaki Vogue still being on the board and all the cards like that. Um, there's just a lot of cards uh, or a lot of decks that are rear guard reliant or field based. So being able to like clear their whole board and do that to them is like, you know, the same. And you have to consider that when you actually do ride PBD, like I'm not arguing for it super hard, but I'm just giving you guys like basically like devil's advocate basically or like the other side mm -hmm. but when you do ride pbd you have to consider i just rode over a three so if i have a danger lunge on rear guard my danger lunge and my pbd are live you know what i'm saying instead of mordred being kind of like a useless vanguard on its own besides standing dark like what if you don't really have like i think one counter blast would be better used using pbd and getting that extra crit on vanguard and the extra power and having a danger lunge to do it on rear guard as well that you've been building up all game uh, rather than like just Mordred and, you know, whatever. Also, there's the possibility that you could have lost your darks and that deck is really counter boss heavy. So without a counter boss from the grade one masquerade, you can't bring back your bla uh, your blaster dark. So if you just have one counter boss and all your darks are gone or you like one dark is in your deck or two darks are in your deck, you haven't seen it and you have the PBD, just do it, you know? But that's that's kind of my argument for it. There's actually a really funny world where oh, um, you, I, I think you're muted. 
Yeah, I can't hear you at all. Oh, you were. Oh, I am muted indeed. I wonder how long I was muted. All right, sorry, oh, Phil. You were I, 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 I was watching you like move your mouth. Yeah, me too. Oh, yeah. no, I was indeed <laughs> muted. Philip, wrap it up for us. We'll, uh, yeah, we'll sorry. I was going to say there's a really funny world where this guy playing the one PBD, uh, for the record, that was actually a numbered PBD, right? Because now I remember seeing this. So there mm -hmm. is a world where he was just playing that one PBD as a meme for fun. And then uh, we're all having this discussion for realistically no actual <laughs> yeah. reason. But it's He's worth like, having. <laughs> it's worth having because the big there was wait this was my this was my highlight of the vision sponsor player John Tahayden just like roasting some dude it is on his post. I'm like, oh wait, come on, man, this guy just wanted <laughs> yeah, some negative just, one. John's just like, <laughs> yo, John dude. roasts ev everyone. <laughs> yeah, he he does. I was like, I, I see him so actively on Facebook, man. It's scary. But yeah, <laughs> more shout outs, I guess. Um, but yeah, we're just gonna wrap this up. Standard. Some other notable tops in standard. Let me just pull this up for you guys because uh, not everyone has access to this information. And it's worth that you guys all know. There was two Murakumos. Murakumo, I think, ultimately won the event. Uh, mm -hmm. One gold, one Pale Moon. Shoutouts to Pale Moon. Uh, uh, Josh, you don't know this, but I'm, I, I, lo I, love, I love Pale Moon. Uh, Pale one Shadow really, is the biggest heart. Really good in this format. It is really good. That's, I've been playing it nonstop. I, like, no leaks, but I, there's a high chance I play this in a future upcoming BCS. <laughs> uh, Blade Master one top, so that's kind of cool. Dimension Police, uh, I think a very big sleeper deck, and finally Darker Regulars, which is Nikki's sleeper yeah. deck of choice and standard. That's my sleeper deck. So those are the Singapore <laughs> top eight. I don't know the particular order besides Murakumo and Shadows in first and second. Uh, but yeah, uh, on to premium. On to premium. Uh, it's Ooh. worth mentioning that premium. I, I, it's worth mentioning that two WCC players uh, were top four in premium, uh, Ryan Kai and then some other dude. I don't DI dude, fourth place, right? Nikki, am I, I right? Would, uh, was it, I would um... just like to say before we officially <laughs> move on to premium, that Nikki's sure. matter doesn't that Nikki's opinion doesn't matter as much as me and Phillips because hashtag consistent. What? what are you talking about? Oh. <laughs> hashtag oh. No, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Oh. I, I was oh. coerced. I was forced yeah. to say this. Oh, yo, yo, this John. Yo, I see how vi Vision treats other players. I'm joking, 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 joking. All right. Uh, but yeah, so premium. Three golds, one DI, right? Am, mm -hmm. am I getting this wrong? And Ryan Kai was gold second place or first place? I don't even know. First place? First, first, first place. place. Mm -hmm. Wow. First. So WCC wins the tournament and then DI gets fourth uh, or yeah. third, something. Now, Whatever. I will say... Um, just to start off that in this format i haven't been as based in premium just because i'm like like premium really annoys me right now like with like ezel like that deck's really annoying to me and like just di like otk so like for me i've kind of like tuned out like to premium just because i'm like i already got my free flight yeah, to yeah, world. Yeah. Like, so so i'm kind of like just playing standard and like i'm sure phillips like kind of on the same wavelength but also like you know nikki probably knows more about that but i also say just to tune in my piece not so much about premium, but about Ryan Kai. Like, I feel like Ryan Kai is like a god at Vanguard. Like, now, now what I mean when I say that is like the amount of like, he actually has a list of all of his tops since the very beginning of the game. And I think that like his tops like may like far outrank anyone that has ever played Vanguard. Um, when I looked at it at least, and I know that he is a Shadow Paladin main, and he is actually like the first person that like you. I know how you're a fan of me because my Luard list. I actually talked to him about my Luard list before I played it, um, before mm -hmm. I won that event. So he's like always been playing Shadows like really heavily. He was like the one of the first people to win with Luard when it came out in the Japanese format. So it's like that's kind of like I reached out to him and I was like, hey, like what do you think? Like BT10 uh, or GBT10 is about to come out. Like, I'm about to have a regional where GBT10 comes out that weekend. Like, what do you think about Shadows? And, like, just being able to, like, pick his brain is a lot of what allowed me to go with the deck list that I went with, finally, and then be able to, like, go into the mindset of the event um, with the mindset that I went into and then just winning. Like, my opponent literally, literally like, scooped to me in finals because he thought that the deck was, like, too unfair like and huh. he thought that he, like and that was back when we had two out of three best top eight so we literally played game one and he was like you got it i don't think i can like go Holy. game two or game three That's pretty okay. so, so I'm, I'm gonna piggy off i'm gonna piggyback off that idea that ryan kai is really good and that he's a shadow man so those two things and he plays gold paladin for this tournament so he loves shadows he has a hard on for shadows but he plays gold paladin and so uh phil and nikki and josh mm -hmm. 
uh, who is a bit out of premium, but yeah, for uh, sure. Yeah, I, I what do you what do you think of this right now? And to me, this just tells me that something's that wrong with premium. Luard Luard cannot fight Ezel. I think if you're ever like a shadow man, um, or you've ever played Luard consistently enough. You know that like the deck that probably pisses you off the most is Ezel followed by Token Rush. So with those two being heavily in the format, like I even think that I was surprised that Luard won Chicago, honestly, um, with the amount of Ezel and Token Rush players that were present there. But um, personally, I just think that you know if Lu- if Ezel goes first, it's like like Luard has no chance. Even if they don't get the superior ride, like it's like Luard has no chance, like because they're just doing too much stuff. You know, they're doing too many uh, multi attacks. Luard's too fragile. Um, we don't run as many B series pieces, so our guard is lower by default, and we just need a bunch of our pieces to start doing our combos, like Morfessa turn. Like by the time we get to a Morfessa turn, it's like we don't even have any resources to use if we do make it there, and that was like through like damage trigger luck, basically. Um, so I think that there's no way like that Luard can even like fight uh, as well effectively when they go first. And also like token rush when they go first or second, it's like very devastating the way that they can play the grade two game kind of better than Luard. And they just can do everything through, through tokens. So they don't have to like actually commit. Whereas we actually have to commit a lot of times, even if it's just, you know, in the early game, like one or two of our pieces, like that could be, you know, the difference between having a Dagda and not having you know, so being able to like commit and keep up your board pieces is just very useful. And th- both of those decks doing the early game better than us just makes like our deck very uh, subpar at best, in my opinion. Yeah, the, the thing with Luard though is it's not like like there there's like a I guess top six with like or like I guess top like eight decks with uh, with premium right now, and like Luard and Neo Nectar are like in my opinion and. I don't know about Philip, but uh, I think they're like in the bottom of like the whole like tier list of really uh, yeah premium. What do you think, Philip? Yeah, I, I think it's really interesting because I remember when we first got the ban list, right? Uh, right before the ban list was Chicago and Luard won, and then everyone mm-hmm. kind of thought going forward the decks that were going to be really strong were going to be Luard and then Neo Nectar, right? And then right after that, Neo Nectar takes six spots out of eight at some regionals that I completely forgot where. Mm-hmm. And then as time goes by, we're starting to see Ezel come in more, Di come in because it just came out, and so like yeah. the meta game is changing a lot. Of- uh, what I think is the best deck currently, I I do think it's Di, but I don't know, I, do. oh, I, I don't do. know how many people are there to like really stop Ezel either, because like yeah, Ezel is one of those powerhouses where like you can choose to play less for the right chain now and kind of just play a more, more more normal deck. That's actually what Ryan was doing. He was only playing one of like the old crit, and so he was kind of just okay. saying, uh, I'm gonna more or less give up on this. If I get it, if I get it. Uh, that's great. If not, then right. Still... Basically, just adding that extra piece just to be able to. I think um, I slightly talked to him about this, and mm-hmm. I think that the the idea behind it is, is I know that also one of my good friends, um, John Howard, he won the Secaucus Regionals and Premium with Ezel. So mm-hmm. it's also just a thing of he was running like I think like multiple crifts, like multiple old crifts. Yeah, so yeah, I, I've, the... I've only ever seen like three crifts. Yeah, mm-hmm. so basically the, the main deck Sorry, idea no is to make it so that you open up, like like either way, it changes from a one-card combo of having bow mains to a two-card combo either way. So I guess the idea behind the deck list that they're building is to run multiple cards that make for a two-card combo. So yeah, yeah. basically if they get like the starter and bow mains, or they get, you know, a new Wonder Ezel, or like V-Series uh, Wonder Ezel and Ezel in their hand, like that or raven hair in their hand like there's a bunch of two-piece combos that lead to them still doing their superior right which yeah, i think uh, is really strong for them yeah that that that's the list that i've seen most people play so far but then uh ryan mm-hmm. kai's list i thought was really interesting uh did you if you look at it very carefully it's less reliant on the superior right and it's more reliant on just going like ultima like ultima you either go ultima or you go uh what's that guy platinum as well into uh Stupid uh spirits. Yeah. Yeah. What are the other? And then so yeah. you can just load the board with damage and you just go from there. And yeah, so like, like it's 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 a very yeah. different play style, but then it has like all the stuff that you want still. You kind of just give up on the mm-hmm. superior ride and you play more like uh stable from that point, which I think is really cool too. And so it it looks like this version of Ezel is also super solid going forward. And so now wow. people have two types of Ezel they can choose from, which is really cool. Yeah, yeah I also agree. Um 
Yeah, it was kind of like the the same argument I was making when Ward. How I said even if they don't give their superior ride when they go first, it's kind of like when they reach three, they will still be in a way like doing the superior ride. If that makes yeah, sense, like they won't be doing it. Silly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So like you know, the stride being able to stride on you while you're grade two is like like even still so good. Like you can do it on them like before. You can do it on them while they're on grade one. They even do it on them while they're on grade two, and then immediately after that, ultimately, it's still a lot of pressure for a lot of decks to handle at all um, to yeah. be able to like worry about doing something against. But 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 okay. So Nikki, you have anything you want to add to this discussion? But yeah, I just think uh, like how Philip said, like he thinks DI is the best deck. I do agree with that. I think the meta is just solved right now until uh, I guess the next format. But yeah, I think so, it's just DI, like best deck right now. So, so Singapore, I think maybe a bit slow on the come up. There was a DI in the top four, but the fact that there was three Ezels, uh, they might have been slower to the, you know, mm-hmm. uh, yeah. uh, the awesome. absorbing of this like new DI powerhouse, which in Cologne actually I think is much more representative. DI first, DI second, right? Yeah. So let's segue right into Cologne. Let's segue into Cologne. Let's even talk about premium first because we're on the topic. DI first, DI second. What was third, fourth? I don't know. I don't uh, I'm not too sure either. <laughs> I'm not so sure. You know why? Strange. Solemn Vagar didn't make top eight, so there's no. God, leave him alone. Oh, <laughs> so there's no coverage. <laughs> oh, the... He didn't but... play Di. That's if he played Di, guaranteed would have won. Yeah, dude. He, he he his tournament track record is NLK first place. He should have taken to the you know the back to back Di, dude. Here. This guy this guy failed himself. You know. <laughs> he, failed him. he played himself. He played himself. Dude. What did he play? What did he play? What did Solomon play? He, he played Ezel and he went X2. And um, I think one of his losses was Novotama, Lamau. Uh, and then. <laughs> Lamau. <laughs> and then the other loss was just uh, like a problem Ezel has is uh, he was stuck on grade one and G assisted multiple times with two grade two. But the thing is, Ezel runs eight grade twos. Like that's the average. No one. Mm-hmm. Like runs like more. They just run the four wonder, four bowmans, and so yeah. the thing is, you are running eight grade twos. Most of the time, you are G assisting for the grade two, but even like sometimes you will miss, and he did miss, I guess, a couple of times, and that's just what you have to deal with going into playing a, like a deck with that type of consistency. Now, I will say that is the reason personally to a competitive event because you will never see Josh Stallworth. Carfet Empire <laughs> play <laughs> like a deck that I don't feel like is consistent going into an event because I'm all about consistency. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't ever go with some like deck where like you know people do this all the time in Georgia with me. They're like, Josh, this deck's so good, and I'm like, what what's good about it? They're like, I could get my opponent from one to six. I was like, okay, but what is that relying on? Like me getting these six cards exactly? <laughs> no, like like you know like I will never like you know do something where like even Bowmains was like consistent. In a way, but every time, like, I like to, like, consider myself unlucky because, like, I never, like, get the cards that I need or check the triggers that I need when I need them to. So, a.k.a., I build my decks in a way where, like, consistency matters more than checking triggers, you know? So, basically, I make it so that, you know, like, for example, every time I pick up a play at Ezel deck, I'll get grade locked, I'll G-assist, I'll whiff, and, and then my die. opponent goes to three, and then I just die. So it's like, you know, in the very few times that I've played, or sorry, in the in the multitude of times that I've played Lord against Ezel, my opponent always goes first, always gets the superior ride, always dumpsters me. But then there's like that one time or those two times where, you know, the Ezel player G assisted for two and then whiffed. And then I'm like, ride Luard? And then like next turn they're on grade one. And then I'm like, this time I will. I'll be striding. <laughs> yeah, this time I'll be more testing. <laughs> all right, all right. But. You talk yeah. about this gold paladin deck being a bit inconsistent mm-hmm. overall. Di that deck, I gotta say that I deck is that deck super is consistent. consistent. Yeah. yeah, that deck yeah. is so. Okay. I definitely, for the record, want to say that I agree that Di is the deck. I just think oh, that sure. as the one that goes first can probably like fight maybe like a forty sixty matchup. That deck is in dude. When you NLK some like when you NLK someone and then go back and to go two, back what to you want first, and that two is you're at like fifteen. Dude, that that. That yeah, is the, the promo. The yeah, promo. that is yeah. not fair, and that's like what Nikki hinged on so much in his tournament, right? That, like mm-hmm. that play, like Nikki, are you cool with me? Like sharing it with people? Yeah, I, I think you're going there. Go that's already yeah. Yeah. Like, I think it's a common is, play. Yeah, that is just, dude. 
No deck can do that besides Nightmare Dolls, and that deck sucks. So what do you mean <laughs> Nightmare Dolls are the best? Yeah, dude, <laughs> no, Nightmare but... Dolls is broken. But yeah, that's... that's definitely like a broken combo that like only like I guess Pale Moon and Di have. Like I can't really think of any other decks that can like superior ride back to two. Um, but, like the fact that that like has it is just like it's almost like the ultimate grade two game because you're not only putting up like crazy pressure like how you just do on like a normal grade three ride, but you're just like you're riding back down at two, your opponent cannot stride, so they, unless they're pl you're playing a mirror match, they really can't do anything, and they can't see breeze, because, you know, you rode the pass turn, mm -hmm. so it's just like, like, it's you the just put get so around much... Everything yeah. in the your your yeah, grade two is exactly. also like a monster wall. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. They actually can't even play the grade two K, because they can't even hit. Yeah. That's, <laughs> the, that's the biggest reason that I believe that, like, when future format, um, before when I was going to be playing premium is I actually think that Luar just like cannot fight DI at all just because of that alone like our multiple our grade 2 game is like usually like 15k 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 walls so when they do the NOK turn and they go back down and their grade 2 is literally like 18k base you're like like, like have you ever seen the meme of like the little white monkey just like this oh yeah <laughs> like, like, like that's literally that's literally Luar Oh yeah, it can be 18k, right? If you get some yeah. like soul charges, all oh, yeah, it could because, be 18. I think base at minimum it's 15, and then it'll probably. Uh, be if you use think, NOK, I think it, um, yeah, NOK higher. has to have 13 cards in soul at least to use its skill. Also, yeah, it'll so be minimum go, 18. 18. Yeah. yeah. So literally, you will be uh, you will be 13 cards in soul to use the effect, and then you're shoving one from hand from NOK skill and three from the board. So and then you're writing one. So basically, you will have plus four 22 cards in soul. Yeah. So you're going to 22k base. Yeah, mm -hmm. so like that's just okay. At so least. hey, re let's pull back instead of fifteen. Now you're on twenty two. They actually yeah. just don't have a grade two game anymore. <laughs> Even if they boost Correct. with an eleven k yes. on their ten, like eleven is like the biggest that boosters get generally because eight mm -hmm. plus three, and that that's twenty one. That doesn't even hit. So holy moly, that deck is insane, guys. Like if you if you want to play a consistent premium deck that just has like so much toolbox i think me and nikki had a discussion about this we ended up calling the deck and okay toolbox right yeah so just because toolbox is everything yeah yeah all your grade three it like tool like in toolboxes in a way where like you have options to write off and okay and you have options to add off rufus and i guess you have options to target with castile so like you have so many path lines like you can go into the normal otk variant where you just go like uh, Master of Fifth Element, or you can just go into the NLK loop, or you can just, you know, grade two game. Like, you have many options. There is yeah. a, something I want to point out, actually. So in mm -hmm. BCS Cologne in Germany, right, uh, the yeah. person who won was actually not playing this variant. He was playing the OTK variant, right? And so that mm -hmm. deck, I guess, is still strong enough to actually just OTK someone and take games as well. If you get first ride, your opponent is, I mean, probably dead, right? So yeah. Um, that, that's another way you can play this deck. The other really cool thing was that this person was playing uh, Edel Rose. You got, do you guys remember that card? Yeah, yeah. The one it adds on um, Werewolf Seeger. So yeah, yeah. Uh, it just gives you like a lot of uh, consistency to your grade two. Like you can run l less grade twos and just like use Edel and search were Werewolf. Yeah, yeah. So is it, it uh, is it like old Gansalot where you put it from hand to deck? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. 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 So, oh, okay. So it acts as a sixth, uh, fifth and sixth werewolf seeker, and it acts as stride fodder throughout the game as well. And so that, Ooh. I so when I saw that, I was like, "Holy shit, this is really cool." I that, think that's, that's a, the type um, of thinking that I really like. Yeah, I think that's adopted from the early royal paladin strategy. Like, I don't know if you guys ever saw like there in like Japan, there was a couple lists for a while that were running like one old Gansalot. Just to like get Blaster Blade on the Grade Two game, the V Series Blaster Blade, um, just to be able to send it back and be like, "Hey, I I got Blaster Blade now." Like I remember this, yeah. and, and then you just yeah. stride with it as uh, stride fodder when it comes time to not needing it. But also, it really helped in like if you just didn't have a way to search Blaster Blade, you had no counter blasts. It was a counter blastless way to search Blaster Blade. So mm -hmm. yeah, one thing I want to do do you know. Uh, so I did like test the Edo version like uh, prior of Houston, and I just really don't like the consistency. And I feel like um, during this event, like a lot of people just didn't know how to play the DI matchup. And I'm not trying to take away from 
uh, the, like the first place person. Uh, I don't really know his name, but I know I did see that he has like a lot of tops. He's like a really good player. He's a really well-known player. But I just feel like a lot of people during this event didn't know how to play against uh, DI, like in general. Mm. I could definitely see that, yeah. DI is uh, one of those decks that just kind of came out, and like not a lot of people really know exactly yeah. how to deal with it. Because it hasn't I, really been meta like since this came out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. pretty much. And uh, I just don't think that Werewolf Seeger, like having it on grade 2, like it's great, you get like a free Soul Charge 2, and if like it's 14, but I don't think it's like very necessary to just run werewolf and uh Adele because it's it's dead like after that turn like it pretty much does nothing yeah i guess the idea is that like after that turn your whole grade two line is like kind of whatever you just want it for the soul church two and like the rest of your grade ones and threes do the work for you yeah yeah sure. all right any final thoughts on this we got to get back to standard because we kind of piggyback cologne <laughs> I, think uh, until, I think until everyone starts playing uh di toolbox uh we're gonna start seeing a lot of like random things pop up here and there but uh i think as the meta starts progressing we might just see di toolbox like all the time like yeah. you know when nlk last year was like literally played everywhere it might look like that and if it yeah. looks like that that's gonna be uh, really really freaking nasty again yeah how do you like dude. the meta like that oh dude 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 di sure. toolbox guys we got to spread this dude we strictly <laughs> broken tcg youtube channel coined the name of the deck DI toolbox. That name is, dude that name is fucking awesome <laughs> spread it like jam spread it like yeah. jam all right on to standard you guys have the breakdown for me for standard uh besides the fact that solemn didn't make it oh my god uh, yeah, <laughs> dude, I, I i'm on fire today that, man. that's sorry. pretty that's pretty much the breakdown yeah, that's a breakdown. So uh, uh, let's go to wrap ups. <laughs> make sure you uh, make sure you buy a play map from the uh, team. So uh, maybe you'll do as well as him in a regional. <laughs> well, well, I hope. Okay, real talk, Solom. I hope you don't hate me. I I know you've never talked to me personally, but a lot of our players are friends of yours, so I'm not a hater. I hope you do better in future regionals. I hope you don't listen to this guy, man. Please. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, if you, if Vagger's not working out for you, Way Shores is. And need some uh, content creators, you know. Uh, anyways, yeah. so, so, uh, so what happened right? in standard? What happened in standard? What happened in standard? Uh, Murakumo first place, Murakumo second place. All right, so kind of like premium, yeah. It's double, fair, double, just one deck. Yeah. The thing about uh standard is that there are other decks that can contest against it, and so there's a lot of other good stuff, right? Uh, premium is a different story. That might become a one one deck format. But yeah. you know, people are starting to realize how strong Murakumo actually is. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm very happy for that. At the same time, I'm not because that deck is actually kind of insane. But uh, yeah, we might just start seeing a lot more Murakumo pop up Dude, here and there as well. What is, okay, I, I might be a bit, uh, just a little bit biased here. What is okay. the reason that, okay, so I predicted, I predicted <laughs> last week, I predicted last week Pale Moon would win both of these events. I don't know what Nikki predicted. But like, um, I think, I think you predicted DI. Mark, oh, you predicted DI. I, I might have said DI. I'm not too sure. Pale Moon. I wasn't here. Dunks actually just dunks on Murakumo. Actually, no, so, I shouldn't say dunk. So, okay. That's exactly. Pale I agree. Moon dunks when it goes first. 100 dunks Murakumo when it goes first. 100. Uh, I don't agree with that. Um, okay, so so I don't agree with that, but just because like I play like an insane amount of Vanguard games like from week to week just between like all the games I play for practice because I have like a lot of free time for doing my channel stuff. So a lot of times I like to like say that I speak from experience playing like, you know, a thousand games plus mm -hmm. in a month in like a, in a given format. So, and even before that, like because of area, like I'm playing at the same time as Japan uh, with playing format. So I like to say that the matchup for Murakumo uh, with Pale Moon, I say is 50-50. Now, depending on who goes first, that could be swayed in either way, but just because one of them goes first doesn't mean that they're going to have the necessary tools to, so to speak, dunk them. Um, so for me, consistently, like, I've been telling people that I think that, like, coming out of all my playtesting, like, I played 2,000 games into Fantasmal in Standard. Yeah. And I think that, like, the best deck is Murakumo. And people were arguing with me because they were like, oh, they don't have the promo. I was like, I never playtested with the promo. So, like, that just, yeah. like, makes it even worse, like... You know, like when, once we get the promo, like it becomes more good. But I never play tested with the promo personally. I just play tested with like Shiryuki and like Hyuga variant. So basically, like, um, of course, you can't utilize Hyuga, like putting Pale Moon's like 
you know, feel back to their deck and they can make a board every turn, which is what makes them able to consistently fight more than other decks. But there is that thing that they run out of steam, like with their counter blasts, like with Luke here. So, you know, once they run out of steam, like they probably have like good, like two really good turns where they're able to like call out a whole entire board and then do stuff. Um, they do have options to kind of get around that, like the um, the grade two that goes in the soul at the end of the turn and uh, counter charges yeah, one. I know Nikki was like, I'm looking for these, like, like Texas or something like that. I just saw, I just saw his like Vanguard post or something like that. Any, anybody have these? So like, but I was like, this guy. <laughs> but, yeah. Um, but yeah, they they have different counter charge options to be able to get around that. However, like the counter charge options that they do have are kind of not enough. Just because I believe that playing the grade three that allows you to counter charge, that's kind of like adding like a kind of an inconsistency to your build because you don't ever want to be stuck in a scenario where you have to ride that because that's just like a, a GG against Murakumo yeah. or anything else that's like semi fast at all. Um, but then also running the grade two is like you have to have no counter boss face up. It's not even like one of the cards where it has it says if you have like one or less face up, which would make it a much better card because you'd be at least be able to counter charge back to having two open. Um, but, you know, just them running out of steam. And then if they don't check triggers, like they are strictly worse than Murakumo. Um, I think right. the strongest so my thing. Counter... Oh, wait, sorry. You, you finished the strongest thing. Oh, sorry. I was just saying, like, I, I think the strongest thing about Pales is being able to mass soul charge, but also specifically soul charge through the use of their grade one a lot of times. And then be able to stack their deck so that once they come back around to their stack, they can just check like double front or um, stuff like that. And I think that's really, really swole. Like I thought um pale moon this weekend or sorry at one of my locals at monday um and i lost the pale moon twice in the tournament when all the previous weeks and stuff like that i've just been like wrecking with murakumo but like this monday i lost against uh pale moon because one of them like rode a three before me and went into luke here called a full board while i was on grade two and then checked double front to which i was like oh like i mean i guess if you do that like that early like there's not much that we can do except for just like kind of lay down and die for it but um and then the second thing was the second pale moon player that i played double healed on me uh check double okay. heal because of the stack so uh, it's just you know um i think that you know in a like in a, a thinking in, or in a mindset where we're not worried about triggers like of course triggers are a part of vanguard but if you like like let's say you're super unlucky and you never check triggers i think that pale moon is like, strictly worse so like i think here this is my you mentioned the important thing that I want to get to is like the stack and the Rami stacks and playing with Rami in that deck. I think we're still early on in Pale Moon's uh, like existence in English standard that people haven't, you know, developed. Like they're not good at, like they're slowly learning to stack better. Cause like back they then, well, they can't Tsukiyomi think basically. Yeah, a lot of people can't Tsukiyomi think, and all the weebs that love Luke here probably can't Tsukiyomi think yet. I'll be honest. I think give it like a couple, like maybe one or two more tournaments. Rami stacking is actually broken. If you know, yeah, it's, it's, it's it's really really good. Yeah, and I think if people kind of play for the Rami stacks more and just like rush through your deck as fast as possible, I think Pale Moon is by far the best deck. But I think early on at this point, I think because I. Th because of the Rami stacks and all that stuff, I think it's a harder deck to play. People need to grasp. People need time to grasp it. But so, if you guys I, think Murakumo was the best, wait, sorry. I, I, yeah, I, I want to chime into this a little bit. And uh, so the way I see it is that Murakumo and Pale Moon both do very similar things, right? You go Excel, mm -hmm. you start smacking your opponent for like some retard number, and they just die. Right? <laughs> so he's, he's not wrong. He's not wrong. So now you have to start thinking about the differences in the two deck, right? Uh, so there's a couple of things that separate the two decks. Uh, Luke here has slightly better draw power in the sense that mm -hmm. they can just go Dorian mm -hmm. and then um, just like flood hand, right? Slightly, uh, come on, I, feel I, slightly, I, I, call I, way I, better I draw power. I'm uh, just say that it's like way more draw power. Okay, yeah. okay, sure. There's way more draw power. All right, <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna. You guys can put out way more draw power. I'm gonna say slightly more draw power. But that's one thing, right? They also have issues with counter blast. That's another thing mm -hmm. that you have to remember, right? Mm -hmm. On the Murakumo side, uh, you have a field wipe, and you have... Easy we also have bigger numbers, generally. You, you, you have slightly bigger numbers, if depending on how the game goes. The thing is, but, the field uh, wipe doesn't do anything. Uh, it, 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 it does. It's a very nice yeah. bonus if you're trying Against to... Against Pale Moon, specifically. Okay, it's oh, Pale Moon, no, specifically. Yeah, he's, he's in the field. Uh, We're talking about the field. Everything. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. my bad. So yeah, it, what, what was I saying? Uh, it oh, has sorry. Shiryuki for easy guard. It has a board mm -hmm. wipe. 
uh, it has less counterblast issues because it'll, it's only counterblast one, right? And so I, I feel like if you look at everything together, it it's one, a lot easier to actually play Murakumo. And B, you run into less overall issues with Murakumo because there's less counterplay that your opponent can like do against you. Because if you play against a uh, Pale Moon, right? Like you can just like kind of try to deny them a little bit, slow the game down, and then you slow them down because they can't just loop your vomit hand, right? Uh, vomit soul, sorry. So because of that, I think Brokumo is a little bit stable and a little bit of play against. And I will say reason, I um, UA specifically, like my kind of strat when I'm playing my Murakumo deck against Pamela players is maybe not most builds are like my build, but my build is like mainly uh, Shiryuki focused. And then like Huga is more like just a bonus for me. So when I play against them, I try to save soul for a double Shiryuki play. Because that literally just neuters a, um, a Lukier's turn most of the time, unless they check like a front or double tr front or something like that. But most of the time, you can save your Lukier's, or sorry, save your Shiryuki's for after their Vanguard attacks. Like, let's say that you PG their Vanguard or to the past their Vanguard or whatever. You kind of wait it out to see what they check. And then you see what they check, and then you can double Shiryuki, making most things unable to hit. And so that you only have to block one real attack. So um, doing that, like I said, like it's all up to, you know, whether they check or not but i have like a lot of turns and tournaments where i go murakumo and i would even like you know i know phil said that murakumo has slightly bigger numbers i think we have like way bigger numbers like we can easily swing for like 50 60 so literally with um hayaki vogue like at your access being able to add 10k to the field multiple times like to everything on your board is just like equals way bigger numbers than pale moon and also, like, we have less hand advantage for sure. I will say that for a guaranteed fact. Like, Pale Moon's, like, hand advantage is insane sometimes. Um, but I will say at the same time that it equals out because we're bigger numbers um, and we have less hand and we're, like, built to survive um, less long, if that makes sense. So, like, Murakumo just wants to, like, get in, smack you, get out. Pale Moon's, like, get in. We're, like, smacking them. But then we want to kind of pull back. We want to retreat into our soul and then draw our, you know, our user cards, and then they can defend themselves. But basically, Murakumo is just like an all-in, like, go in, try to smack your opponent. And that's why the promo is so good, is because it allows you to do that even further. Like, smack your opponent even harder, even further, even faster, you know? So having those numbers be just really, really ridiculously big makes it so that even if you don't check triggers, like, sometimes you're just like, oh, I just actually can't guard this. Like, they didn't check any triggers, but my hand cannot guard a 70k attack or 60k attack especially multiples of those so it's just something to you know be wary of a lot of times i don't find myself in a situation like that with pale moon unless i'm like oh but what if they check like a front or a double front like murakumo like you can just look at the board and die like no matter what i check defensively or whatever like i'm going to die um right now okay yeah. So right now, because Murakuma also doesn't have that promo, it's a good thing that you mentioned that mm -hmm. Pale Moon has like the better grade two game. I would say it has a nine nine nineteen play, which is like really nuts. Nine nine nineteen if you're going first, or mm -hmm. if you're going, or if you're playing against Excel or if Protected doesn't matter. Nine nine nineteen is a great grade two game, and I think Murakuma has actually a rather weak grade Sorry, two I, game. Sorry, I need to chime in here. That's not true because Murakuma actually has a bunch of dudes that just call other dudes, and it makes yeah, but it doesn't plus the hand. That's the problem, right, bro? No, but it like, pluses the board. The thing with grade twos in uh, what's it called? What's the deck? Uh, Pale Moon, right? Is that you actually yeah. have to open them. It's harder to just open triple two than you think. For Murakumo, well, also you, you have open, like um, one two and like the stupid rat, and then you have like a board. Yeah, board. with with Murakumo, you can call the. Weak. Yeah, the weasel, the weasel deck is the weasel, the weasel deck. Yeah, there you go, the weasel deck. Oh, I, I take God. it all back, dude. The no, no, weasel okay, so, deck is the best. So, so well, what I what I run is um is like a like a hybrid variant of weasels, like basically only running the weasels that are the most useful, and then filling everything else with another spot. So this is a deck that I've been play testing like for a while, and I'm actually like secretly playing it into Atlanta. But you know, um, <laughs> but, <too. laughs> but but basically, um. If you ride, like, now, this is not my ideal ride. My ideal ride for the deck is actually, um, what is that card called? Uh, Bloody Mist, like the 9K. Great yeah. Team. The one um, so calls. Bloody Mist, yeah, so Bloody Mist can actually call another. And then what you can do is you can, like, Weasel Red, which is the weasel that counterbots one, and you discard any amount, and you get any amount of those weasels. And if you're able to do that on Vanguard, like, let's say that you really want to pressure your opponent. 
like you just make 32k columns like across your board and that's like the best grade two thing that you could ever yeah. do okay. and then plus okay. like defensively <laughs> so no no defensively right so yeah. your weasel like gives the other weasel to intercept so you have two 10ks that you can intercept with which will automatically like neuter your opponent's grade two game usually um but that's just what i've experienced like yeah the weasel yeah. grade two game is a different story like i i'll retract everything i said because <laughs> Merkua has the weasels but um no oh, like my point is the <laughs> phil with with the rap play is like there's forward plusing but it actually gets stopped with one defensive because of the nature of rat right what the reason i quote 9919 is that's a really you know good board like they have to take probably two damage that turn or give up I, a lot of cards I, in hand. I, right? I, I feel like yes but uh, you're more likely to not get that set up than you are to get it. But in, from the Murakumo sense, it's a lot easier to just get the... Yeah, you just open Rat. No, I, I, I yeah. quote the 32-32-32 play. Every, every <laughs> time. Consistent. Consistent. I wasn't thinking it's so, was. it's, it's so good. And if you, check a, if you check a crit, your opponent's like one foot in the grave. I I, I swear to you, you eh? like If you go 32 <laughs> to your opponent's like, let's say let's say that um, I go first, right? Yeah. I read uh, grade one. My opponent gra- reads grade one. Uh, they're like attack your vanguard. I'm like, all right, give me that counter blast. I need that. And then they're like, take that. <laughs> you draw, ride weasel red, discard, get uh four weasel whites and one weasel yellow in your back row. Like all of these weasel, um, all of these weasel whites are giving two k to each one of your weasels. So every one of your weasels it's eight k, which makes every one of your weasels sixteen. So you attack for thirty two to their eight. Like any <laughs> sane player is gonna be like no guard. Then yeah, then they did three damage. <laughs> yeah, they didn't. They didn't take a damage trigger, right? So then you're like 32 yeah. with your Vanguard crit. Okay, can you just shake my hand? Like because yeah. next turn, I'm next turn I'm gonna ride Shiryuki. Yuki, and then you're gonna be minus 10k on your on your 9k or your 10k. You're gonna have 32k columns and an extra one with Excel. Like, All right, just- guys, you heard oh. it here first. The Weasel deck is gonna yeah, take yeah, yeah. is gonna take Toronto by storm. But not. <laughs> I want to wrap this up. I want to wrap this. This was a good discussion. I really like this discussion. Oh yeah, I'm gonna first go to Phil. You want anything you want to say besides weasels to the discussion about? <laughs> I, I want to say that everything I was saying wasn't even related to weasels. <laughs> <laughs> I was talking about the regular deck. Yeah, the, the rats deck. and stuff, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, but the no, weasel I, deck I, can be, you know, <laughs> can, can be a deck. Can <laughs> be a deck. <laughs> awesome. And uh, Nikki, Nikki, wrap this up. You didn't get. Much, yeah. uh, you want to chime in on? Comparison uh, so I, I guess in my like pale moon testing like before Houston, I just like I guess against the normal <laughs> American Mo deck, like <laughs> I, I feel like it's just like the pale moon matchup or pale moon Mercumo matchup is just like I think it's favored towards like uh, p- uh pale moon in my opinion. Like I, I'm I think I'm hundred percent with the deck. But um I do definitely think Murakumo, the normal deck, <laughs> is like uh, it's just a much better deck against the whole format. Uh, I think definitely weasels can be a little less inconsistent. No offense, no offense. It can be very powerful when it, it is like it definitely can pop off hundred percent. But if it doesn't get is like that grade two, of course, then um, like you're not doing much and you do lose your whole hand because you do have to discard yeah. and like call all those weasels. So those there can be like pros and cons with it. But that's just my opinion. I think Pale Moon has a favorite matchup, but I think Pale Moon is like lower on the tier list uh, I, I, sorry i want to say one more thing this idea of the weasel deck now that i'm kind of looking at the cards because i'm going to be honest i didn't really know much about it until like mm-hmm. literally 30 seconds ago i'm reading cards right now right and i, I, I my head's thinking oh so if you open up to that stupid uh the grade two weasel that spawns a board right it's like yeah. opening these lots like red four times as worse <laughs> yeah well i mean like literally if you i don't know like in my play testing with it like most of the time, I open up with it. Like, for example, in my current deck, my ideal grade two ride is Bloody Mist. But in the pure Weasel deck, your your ideal grade two ride is Weasel Red. So, like, in this current deck that I'm playing, I only run three Weasel Red. But in the other Weasel deck, I run four. So, like, it's just like, you know, like, we, we, we like to say this thing in Georgia that we say all the time. We're like, bow mains. Like, like any grade Aww. two that you need to ride, you know, grade two turn. Like, oh, yeah. bow mains. Like, you know how they always have bow mains? Yeah, we always have Weasel Red. Like, you know, it's <laughs> yeah, just like, yeah, okay. you know, it's the consistency of riding a grade two that you put at four in your deck is actually a lot higher than you would think. Mm-hmm. Um, like, I always, like, get Weasel Red in that deck. And then if you don't, like, you, you also have Weasel Black or Weasel Black or Blue, something like that. Mm-hmm. It's like the grade two that does the same thing that the grade one does where it gives 2K still. Um, but you can just, like, ride that or the Shiryuki grade two and still 
have just as effective of a great two turn, but then you'll also just be doing Shiryuki stuff too, like soul charging and searching for Shiryuki. Yeah. I wish I was that good so. to get Bowman's, but I'm not good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anyways, anyways, uh, we'll wrap it up here. Murakumo first and second. Just to summarize, guys, the deck is really strong. Counter argument: Pale Moon's good too. Pale Moon is, but, good you know, but you, just you remember it's good. Bad. Yeah, and like Pale I said, Moon's still like, good, guys. Everything that I said um, is, you know, I still said at the very beginning. I think that Pale Moon and and uh, and Murakumo is a fifty fifty matchup. Now, I think it can go from like a forty sixty, depending on you know what's going on. If Pale Moon's checking more triggers, uh, it can go from like a seventy to a seventy thirty in Pale Moon's favor. Uh, so, you know, it just really depends on like what's going on in the board state. But I think that just both of their natural advantages, like as well, they start at a 50 50. Like I, I would say, like it's not it like, you know, standard. <laughs> correct. Yeah, correct. But I mean, I think that because of like the way that standard is, it's a lot more matchup reliant as, as like than people would think. So basically, like even, you know, when me and Nikki were playing into, uh, Anaheim, the last time that they had singles, I was playing Murakumo, and Murakumo versus Shadows was like a, a 80 20. Like, it was so hard to beat Shadows, like in PVD format and original AO4 format. It was so hard to beat Shadows with Zambaku. And so it was literally just like, if you sit down against Shadows, you're kind of like, like, wow, this is really dumb. Like, I can't do anything effectively. So, you know, just having like matchups like that where they can like neuter certain stuff that you do. Like, even, even any Excel deck versus current Murakumo. Like, being able to just make an entire board, like Nova Grappler, and then be like, hey, yeah, uh, Soul Blast 1, spin your whole board. And then you're, like, as the Nova Grappler player, you're just like, mm. and I'm going to lose my whole hand because they're for 60s, 70s. Like, that's why I just think that there's no real Excel deck except for Bell Moon that can fight um, Murakumo on an even field, even playing field. All right, and with that, we'll just wrap it up and move into wrap-ups. All right, Josh, we're in the end of the podcast. Thank you so much. Thank you so much no for problem. being on no problem. cast today. Uh, and- uh, do you have any shout-outs uh, to this? Um, shout-out to um, my channel, Cardfight Empire, uh, my Cardfight channel. Uh, shout-out to Let's Plays Animes. That's my second channel, the uh, anime channel. Uh, shout-out to Vision. Uh, shout out to UA for being my uh, number one fanboy <laughs> or a slash slash fan. He's he's held it up from the beginning. Uh, shout out to Philip. He's he's pretty cool. I met him in Chicago. Actually, like hey. we met, we were standing like next to the side of the stage, and I was like, "Oh, dude, congrats!" And he was like, "You too." And I was like, "Man, <laughs> we're, we're just so together. We're, so we're, we're just together." Yeah, I mean, yeah. it was some experience. And then, of course, Nikki. You know, from multiple Anaheim experiences, and uh, yeah, it was always nice seeing last- you. Last shout outs to oh, the yeah. green the green trigger. She's oh, a green trigger. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so good. So good. So good. All right. All right. Awesome. 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 And uh Phil and Nikki, you guys have any shout outs? Shout outs to Strictly Broken for sponsoring us. Yeah, shout out to uh, yeah, the superior team over Vision, by the by the way. Yeah, and before uh, Strictly Broken was uh, Vision money match. Oh, oh. oh, stop, oh stop, 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 stop. Well, stop. actually, well, okay, 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 okay. Here, so, 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 uh, premium though, premium <laughs> though. <laughs> and then Nikki got second. Hmm? Oh, I said me and Philip both won in Chicago. And- oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but remember, standard and premium. Yeah, premium's a little more uh, big, big brain. brain. Big brain. <laughs> yeah, standard, you just have to check those yellow stars. The <laughs> yellow stars. I feel like you should have actually won. Uh, just yeah. Wrong. yeah. It's just unfortunate. But yeah. Uh, Nikki, any shout outs you want to give? Uh, shout out to Yue. And uh, from episode one, Yue's mom. <laughs> Yo, bring it back, throw back to my mom. So, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> Nani? All right, all right, all right, all right, all uh, right. I'm going to give a shout out actually. Shout out to Tom. He actually always, you know, Tom, always here for these live streams, works super hard for us, is doing a bunch of behind the scenes stuff for the team, for the channel. So, Tom, shout outs to you, man. Shout outs to you. We're going to see each other soon. Uh, so, uh, cool, cool, cool. Thanks. Always a pleasure to see you. My man. birthday in two days. Oh, oh yeah, happy, birthday yeah. happy birthday to Tom. Happy birthday to Tom. Producer Tom. Um, all right, guys. And with that, the fourth episode. Fourth, I think. Yeah, fourth episode of the stand-up. I'm going to wrap it up. And uh, we'll see you guys next week.
Peace. Uh, wait, 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 wait. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. I will say, uh, <clears throat> watch this podcast, and you too can stand the vanguard. Night, Andy. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>